Hello, welcome to number three in the third series of the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Had a good week, Carl? Uh, all right, just, just boring. It's a boring week. Because that, that sort of kidney operation I've had, um, it's just affected my life in a big way. How are you now, Carl? Are you feeling better? Uh, better, better than what was last week. Because last week you really were not putting the effort in, were you? And it's your own fault, you know, you've got kidney stones, you don't drink enough water. Have yeah, no, well, that's, that's what I've been doing this week, just drinking, that's, I mean, you, you said what, what sort of week have you had, what have you been up to, that's what I've done, I've drank water. <laughs> that's all I've been doing. <laughs> if there's a water shortage in London, <laughs> it's because of that. <laughs> Honestly, just, that's what you have to do, Can't, it's sort of, it's just boring. It's like a, a basking shark, it's sort of. <laughs> With its mouth open, just going through the water. Oh. Sick of it. Oh, he's led the life of plankton for <laughs> one you, week. Have you been able to do anything, or have you just been resting? Uh, it's best to rest, um, just because you know your body's still in shock, even though in the head, physically, I thought it was all right. Uh, the body sort of just acts in weird ways. Brilliant. Um, you know, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like I said last week, you you don't think about your body until there's something up with it. And then you panic a bit. And then you go, right, I'm going to look after it from now on. I've been given a second chance here. Uh, as I said before, this was not a <laughs> life-threatening illness or operation. No, but it's, it's that same thing. The last time I had it was when I nearly choked to death on the Mr Freeze pop. Right. Where I had that sort of, uh, what do they call it when you have like a second coming? Do you know what I mean? It's that sort of thing where <laughs> I you I don't go, think you're the second coming. No, but well, that, that thing of... If you are, we're all screwed. That, you mean the second chance? Yeah, it's, it's it's a second chance thing. Your life flashes before you, doesn't it? Yeah, but you get a, uh, you suddenly feel kinder. Do you know what I mean? You, really? You, yeah, you sort of go right. You know, that was a bit of a warning. Be like good, Scrooge. Be good to people and stuff. Yeah, a little bit. I think it's normal. So are you now a nicer person? You've given more generously to charity and the like. Uh, well, I haven't been out, so I can't do anything. I can't help anyone. Well, yeah. Go online. And but maybe uh, yeah. you know, once donate some money. All this cash you're in. No, I've given enough money away. Sick of it. But, um... Oh, he's changed. So he hasn't changed at all then, no. But you've also got to be careful as well, because there's that thing of, you can drown yourself, uh, by having too much water. Yeah. Mm. So it's just getting that balance right of not having too much and filling yourself up. Mm. Well, yeah, it's that balance right of, uh, not, uh, dehydrating and, uh, you know, be becoming like a, a desert jellyfish, like a little crisp. And drowning yourself. Yeah. You're right, it is a balance. That's exactly what you've got to I do. I don't know how you've managed it, Carl. It's very complicated. Yeah. No, but I... What I do is I, um, when I'm thirsty, I drink, and when I'm not thirsty, I don't. Yeah, but the, that's the problem with me. Uh, whatever it is that's in your head that says you should have a drink, I don't really have one. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a brain. It's called a brain. Yeah. It's the brain that tells you. <laughs> but the brain's never thirsty. <laughs> I only think of drinking when I'm eating. And I'm not eating as much because my kidney's weird. <laughs> I don't want to put any pressure on it, so I don't drink. So now, if I have it in front of me all the time, I go, right, I've got to have that. <laughs> so yeah, so I feel, you know, feel a bit better. Good. Just, uh, it's just been a long week. Because when you, when you don't do much, it's just, you know, time doesn't whiz by. And normally your weeks are packed, as we know, with yeah. visits to the cobbler. Yeah. And... Well, it's just, like they say, innit, they say, uh... Following, following an ant. <laughs> exactly, yeah, you've know, got a hectic schedule. I know, but, I don't but know how you fit it all in. But, you know, because <laughs> I was close to death and everything. You weren't close to death. I, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, other people who have been in that situation where they're dying and what have you. And it's weird how, like, in a way, do you know, like they say before you die, things to do? Yeah. I I, think I've never heard best. that sentence before. I don't know if they say... Well, I've extrapolated from that. What you mean is there are certain things you should do before you die. Swim with dolphins, etc. Yeah. But in a way, because I've had such a boring week, it's been a long week, so if I was dying, don't go swimming with dolphins, because you'll love it and the time will whiz by, and you go, oh, there's another day gone. Whereas I've been sat at home, watching, you know, The Price is Right and stuff, and it's just like, oh, it's only four o'clock. <laughs> oh, this is dragging. So if I was dying, I'd go, yeah, it's dragging, but I've got ages more left to live. Yeah. what's the point? But it's really about quality of existence, isn't it, when you're dying? No, but anyway, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> been a boring week, but what I've been doing is going on the internet, oh, sort of learning stuff, been watching more documentaries about stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay, tell me something you watched on the internet then. 
the thing that stands out the most, uh, there's this spider. Right. That a fella got. Um, popped it in like a little sort of bottle. Yeah. And uh, chucked in 80 ants. And the spider, right, just went mental. And uh, I don't know if the spiders eat ants. I don't know. I don't know if they do. Uh, but uh, he wasn't happy with them that they were there, and he was just whizzing around, um, sort of biting them, not eating them, just giving them a bite. And the ants would sort of just lie there dead. <clears throat> and uh, spider had this system of sort of going right. I'm going to put the dead ones over there, and it was biting them, dragging them across putting them in a pile, killing another one, popping it in the pile, and by the end of it, he'd made like a little pile of dead ants, and he was just there sort of breathing heavily. And that that, that was amazing, because I'd never witnessed that before. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't see that happening, do you, normally? So you think that if people are unfortunately passing away, sort of visiting Disneyland or whatever, they should... they should Just learn stuff. Just sure, get on the internet and this, watch spiders. This world is amazing. Attacking ants. Um... And just that thing of, you know, you, last week you were saying how good ants were and how they brainy and they work hard and everything, yet none of them sort of, they didn't know what they were doing. There was panic going on. <laughs> <laughs> you watched them again, they were running backwards and forwards. And I've, I remember, like, seeing a programme about ants where uh, they meant to sort of work together as a team. Yeah. And if they climb up a person's leg... Um, that person stood on their house, say, yeah. and they're all like, oh. There's um, a signal and they all bite at the they same time. They all bite at once. Now, yeah. if that had done that on that spider, yeah. they sort of all go on it, and when they're all in position, one of them sort of goes, no, and it bites, <laughs> and then it would it would do some damage, but there was none of that. Mm. And But you've seen things like the Towering Inferno, where even humans panic crazily and jump out of windows and things until Steve McQueen comes along and saves the day, so... Yeah, but... You, at the end of the day, when you're in a towering inferno, you were there relaxing on holiday. So, of course you're going to be relaxed, and it's, the shock of it's going to make you go, oh, I wasn't ready for that, I was sat here in my trunks. <laughs> whereas, <laughs> sure. whereas that ant, ants should always be alert. Well, yeah. Any insect's life should always be... Well, so for a human scooping up uh, 80 of them and putting them in a bottle with a giant spider. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's what insects do. Um, their life, they never relax. That's what's weird with an insect. There's no f downtime, is there? <laughs> it's you wake up, you go and get the food, you build your house. That's what you do, so you're always alert. They shouldn't be sort of running around going, oh, what do we do now? That should be, that should be in them. I they love that you're annoyed at these poor yeah. ants that were bitten to death. But also, they say they're clever. I was looking at it. If I was an ant, I would have just crawled under the pile of dead ones. <laughs> just sit under there, wait for the spiders to go. None of them were doing that. They were all staying on one side and the dead ones on the other. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying that you know you're always sticking up for insects, saying they know what they're doing. They don't. Uh, uh, what, what do you mean? Well, where, <laughs> yeah. Where's this come from? When have I ever stuck up for insects? It's you that's follow them, say, <laughs> saying they're brilliant and that, and ladybirds are right-handed and Christ knows what. No, but you know, so I'd learned that. Brilliant. Um, you haven't learned anything. Le there's nothing to learn from there's that. There's nothing there? you learned from uh, that. Something about um, jellyfish uh, and uh, what else was there? There was this fella, there was a programme on the telly about survival. Um, and a fella who, uh, he, he looks after elephants. And he's in this little hang glider, looking for an elephant that he's looking after. He has to keep a track on where it's going and all that. And one day he's saying, oh, I haven't seen the elephant today. And the fella's like, well, look, look for it tomorrow. He's like, no, it's best if I go and look for it now. Because it might go further away or something. He said, oh, I wish you'd leave it you know, till tomorrow, so straight away you're going, oh, this is trouble. So he's going out in his glider, sort of, at night. Uh, he's looking I for doubt it's a glider. I well, like, it's, a, it's a glider with an engine. It's one a of light aircraft, then. Yeah. So he, he gets in that on his own. He's wandering about in the air, looking down. Um, like I say, it's loads of land. He's looking for one elephant. He's not having much luck. Anyway, I think he gets to a point when he goes, oh, I'm having no luck, I might as well go home. Goes to turn round... Something happens, the glider falls to the floor, crashes. Light, light aircraft. Light aircraft yeah. yeah. That crashes, he gets out, he's broke his legs, Blind. um, done his back in, um, hurt his hands. I mean, he's in a bad way. And, uh, he looks at the plane, and that's, uh, that's a wreck. Petrol's coming out of it. He's thinking that's not going to fly again. And, uh, 
he has to lie there, doesn't he, for like 48 hours or something. And in that time, everything's being chucked at him. He has a, a lion wandering around him. A scorpion walked over his leg. <laughs> Some sort of dangerous snake went in his shoe. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else is there out there? Some sort of bad ants. Um, just everything that's there that could cause a problem. Mm. He had it all in his life. I, 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 I haven't seen this, but I suspect there's a lot of conjecture <laughs> yeah. in this telling of <laughs> the it. Bad, you know ant. I mean? bad answer. No, just anything that you could think of mm. that's out there to cause you a bit of a problem. Camels. He got hot. He got so hot his lips fell off. <laughs> 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 no, because you have to have a lot of juice to keep your lips sort of how they are. Right. Uh, so that's the sort of state he was in. Yeah. 48 hours. And yet he survived in the end. Someone came and found him. And, and you that, thought that you were bored in. doing nothing. Yeah, no. Well, he didn't even have the internet. Yeah, but he had a lot of insects. What would to watch. you do then if you land? If you landed, right? Supposing uh, we all land, right? We're shipwrecked. Okay, there's no food around, um, but there's a chance we might be saved. Like in a few days, we just got to stay alive just for a few days. Okay. Mm. Um, Steve offers up his penis. For what purpose? Well, it's it's already you've t- torn it in the car in the uh, plane crash. Anyway, it's hanging off. You go, okay, listen, lads, let's eat this. Let's go. This will go three ways. I should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, <sighs> I'll look for something else. <laughs> Because we're surrounded by water. Why are we eating knob? There's loads of fish and everything. There's more fish in the sea than there is stuff on land. <gasps> that that was something else that I've read about about how there's more sea life happening. There's loads more. What stuff. do you mean? Than what? Um, than stuff happening on land. Well, yeah, it's a bigger place, isn't it? Yeah, and there's more. It's, they're all coming further in because it's getting so crowded. Everything's uh, being pushed outwards. So we, we're going to get to a point where people won't go walking in the sea because there'll be something deadly just floating about on the on near the shore. Again, that's no information at all. <laughs> I don't know. There's yeah. no information in that statement at all. Yeah, I said I said how the sea is so overcrowded that everything's being pushed to the edge. It's not overcrowded. It is. What's been? You mean things that are in the sea are being pushed to the edge of the yeah, sea? Yeah, because there's new stuff happening all the time. These new creatures being made, they're changing quickly. They were saying how, like, I don't know, 50 years ago, jellyfish didn't even have a have a sting. That's rubbish. Try 50 million and you'll get closer to the truth. But, but what I mean is, in terms of, like, land, we all look the same, don't we? We've had two legs and two arms for ages. Whereas in the sea, things are changing at a, a really fast rate. So, like, jellyfish we're knocking about. The sea is a much more stable environment than the land anyway. What are you on about? Well, I'd have thought... I wouldn't have thought evolution is any any faster in the sea than land. Yeah, it is. Well, no, what, what's, where's the evidence for this? The well, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you how jellyfish have changed. And look at them. They're and nothing. how have they changed then? So they didn't, 50 years ago they didn't have a sting. Yeah. Now they have. Yeah. Trilbies. They wore trilbies 50 years ago <laughs> as <Yeah>. well. <laughs> and they just spoke with a much more, you know, <laughs> yeah, refined liquid. accent. <laughs> yeah. Just that, that is quite a lot though, isn't it? Because jellyfish are nothing. But like no, you made that before. up. That's not a fact. There's, there, there's no facts come out of this. That's not, not, oh, that's interesting. That you haven't said anything. Jellyfish oh. are, haven't changed in 50 years. No, they have. They've changed a, a lot in terms of... Well, they haven't changed in hundreds of millions of years, so I don't know what the 60s had to do with anything. I don't. I, I just don't know what what influence the Beatles and Mary Quan at, suddenly had on jellyfish when they because hadn't changed for was, hundreds of millions this, of years. With all this sort of loose free sex, you know, free <laughs> yeah, love, yeah, they yeah. were just going berserk. I know. Yeah, there were no inhibitions <laughs> yeah. amongst the jellyfish anymore. Things are, are changing a lot. To think that jellyfish, when they were, when they first came out, they were nothing. Jellyfish are, are nothing, aren't they? They're just a blob. <laughs> so when they first came out, when they were first released, and, knew and, by wrong <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is, even though they were nothing, they've grown to have a bit of something, <laughs> just to get by in a busy place. Which I is don't the know sea. what you're talking about. It's, it's all d- guesswork uh, and conjecture. It's, not I've been it's all nonsense. I've been reading all this and watching stuff. Carl, you haven't learned anything. Mm. Well, that's not entirely true because he's obviously 
learnt enough to have written a poem about some of these subjects. Oh, I love his poems. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Um, is Carl going to read this for me, Steve? If you want him to. I think so. I did one about my kidneys. What was it called? Uh, didn't have a name, it doesn't need it. Uh, Ode to a Nephron. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas. And no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one about a jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah, it certainly would. Uh, so. <laughs> That's great. That's really good because it's jelly. He's 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 done us there, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a really yeah. good poem. It would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. A little half rhyme. Yeah. Um, do you want the one about my kidneys? Yeah. Uh, for God's sake, my belly ache. The doctor said it's my kidney. He said he's got a stick of tube up me knob. I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> For God's sake, knob ache. <laughs> oh, 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 God. I'm sort of mildly disappointed that they're quite good. Yeah, yeah. No poet's ever written about jellyfish and kidneys. It's great. Oh, God, I think you might have the market sewn up there. <laughs> it is. It would be spiteful to put a jellyfish in a trifle. I mean, I'm, I'm both impressed and fascinated and worried by Carl's new literary outlook. Yeah. You know, we, we've said to him, we've, we've tried to make him appreciate the arts and poetry and... And uh, you know, uh, you know, explaining like what metaphor does and and symbolism and all that. But I'm worried it will backfire because what if he becomes clever and erudite and then we lose our little endless well of stupidity? What mm. if we lose our little shaved monkey? I mean, these podcasts without you know, it's almost like you were evolving into a human. I mean, you've actually. You've authored a book. Well, I have to say, I mean, without at the risk of sounding like we're shamelessly promoting it, I've only just looked at the book today because that's the first time I've seen it, The World of Carl Pilkington, and uh, I was very impressed by how legitimate it feels. I mean, it does feel like an actual well, book. Well, he's put so much work into it. I mean, he... He's I done mean, drawings, he's done extra thoughts and ideas, and it's very odd to think that that has probably gone now into the British Library, which I think is obligated to take a copy of every book published. Incredible. I but, mean, let's be honest, it's not going to really... It's not going to be on anyone's bookshelf. It'll be on their lavatory cistern, possibly next to their bed. But nevertheless, you know, it's hardback and it's got pages. It's a real book. Yeah. Will you uh, now read some some great works? Will you read poetry at all? Or? Um, probably not. I, I don't like reading made-up stories because Fiction. life's life's interesting enough, isn't it? Right. If I'm going to read someone else's lies, I might as well make some of my own up and save me money, is what right. I mean. But you do read um, lies and made-up things, you just take them as the truth. Um, Most of the spurious facts and apocryphal tales and ridiculous stories that you read on the internet are, I mean, fiction. Yeah, but as long as it gets you thinking, then it really doesn't matter. Say, like, you know, I was telling you about the sea being full up, yeah. right? Yeah how there's too many fish in it and they're all being pushed out. Then, um, you know, it was saying about how the jellyfish is changing yeah. from a bit back just being a blob to now being a blob with stingy bits. You go, oh. And then... No, I don't. I think I wonder what he read. And I then, wonder what he was reading. Then there. I'll think of what other things are in the sea, how are they changing? And then that's when I might do a poem about an octopus with two heads. Because it's, it's got me thinking, so no longer am I just reading someone else's story, spending a full week reading some other story. I've read a little paragraph, and that's got me thinking about it. And it's an inspired you to make great art. With uh, an octopus with two heads. And you just think, yeah, that would work. You know, that's a good good way for them to evolve. 
They've got all the arms. Give them two heads. <laughs> They've got all the arms. And, you know, it would work, because like I've said to you before, it is one big head to make it two smaller heads. So it's just looking at science, looking at how things can move. It's on. not looking <laughs> but at it's science. it's not looking at science. You then speculating on an, on an octopus having two heads is of no value, is it, to anyone or anything? But there's people out there who are bringing out books who are writing stuff like that for sci-fi stuff. And I think, why am I reading that? that's there? entertainment. Everyone knows it's not true. They're doing it to... But they do more than just say, what would it... Wouldn't it be great if there was, a, if there was an octopus with two heads? They then paint a world in which this octopus exists I and presumably causes some kind of narrative interest. I can do that on my own, though. Without... So know, what's the story of the octopus with two heads? It's happier in the end. Everyone likes happy ending. He's got company. But if that's we not a story, can't what, what? Tell us the story. What, you made up a story about an octopus with two heads? No, I'm just saying... I've, I've pitched, I've thought about how the sea's changing. Right. right, what else is in the sea? Octopus. Right, what's an octopus like? Well, it's just a big head with a load of arms. Right, how would I change that? <laughs> <laughs> I love this thought process! But it's not a story. This is not a story. It's not anything. It's just some thoughts you've had. It's not- a you're story, a story is there to make you think and, and have thoughts. But what is it that you've thought? You've not- I don't see what- what you've thought here. I've just thought, yeah, that'd be alright. <laughs> I know, but- Well, like- like King Kong, then. That's only someone who's gone, oh, monkeys are getting better at stuff. Yes, but it has a story, doesn't it? They go in search- No, it isn't. It isn't saying monkeys are getting better at stuff. <laughs> that's not what it's saying. There's lots of themes, but that's not one of them. Monkeys anyway. are getting better at stuff. No, they're getting <laughs> better at stuff the way they try to sort of- he tried to go out with a woman. <laughs> That's them moving on, isn't it? It's the monkey going, do you know what? I quite fancy her. And you know from the beginning, I mean, that is a story that you go, well, that relationship ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't, I, I mean, I've not gone out with women who have quite fancied, but then they smoke, and you go, oh, that's enough to put me off. Yeah. So, when a monkey's that big, <laughs> I wouldn't even, the thought wouldn't even pass my mind. <laughs> to go on a date. we could, this could work out. <laughs> Sometimes it's just, you know, relationships are made for each other. <laughs> Now, that for a story, you, you, you wouldn't think it'd go past page one, <laughs> yet you're having a go at me because an octopus has got two heads, which isn't that weird. When you look at them anyway, the, I mean, it must be the weirdest <laughs> thing knocking about on the planet. I'm not kidding you. I've never seen anything so weird. And yet... <laughs> he's angry because he's not he's seen anything so weird as not to so happy. But it's it not yet a story. What's weird about it? What's strange about an octopus with all the things that could. Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. <laughs> a dog has got human eyes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if a jelly. Honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. But, like I said to you, it's that way that <laughs> they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look, they look like, because they've got eyes, you can make eye-to-eye -eye contact with them. <laughs> what do you a jellyfish, making? what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> you can see, see a lot in eyes, do you know what I mean? They say, don't trust him, why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any and I don't trust them. <laughs> Whereas if it had them, Maybe there'd be the odd one that I'd go, oh, that one's all right. Okay, Carl, I'm just gonna throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you'd change it, okay? A crab. How would I change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would it, would it change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. But so why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. And so they're <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. Yet yeah, they're still here, they're still doing that, they still design that way. What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on earth? Yeah. In terms of, um, design and everything, and, uh, if you lined everything up, say if I'd come from another planet, yeah. and everything was lined up in a row, and they said, right, we're gonna give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet. Yeah. And you go, right, go on then. And you go, this is man, here's woman. 
here's a dog, here's a cat, mm. here's an octopus, here's a- I go, hang on a minute, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's only got a ring down. <laughs> that jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. There was an animal in the paper today that I've never before seen. Jesus it's Christ. called an alpaca. They are gormless looking. The fellow who breeds them said they are easy to look after because they're used to harsh conditions because they normally live in the mountains. The problem with this is they will turn useless eventually, and then if we try to bung it back on the Andes, they won't like it. It's like how people win these live like a star for a week competitions. They're not good for anyone. <laughs> okay. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> if something's living somewhere, but, he's not gonna but why are we going to bung it back? Andes. He's presumably breeding them for something else. Yeah, but say if eventually, you know, the world's getting busy, there's hardly any room, and we go right. What can we shift here? What's getting in our way that we can shift? Well, those funny-looking things came from the Andes. Bung them back. All right, then let's put them back. And they go, oh, they don't like it. They're not surviving. They're dying out. Why did we bring them here? Oh, it was closer. Yeah, but look, we've died out now of the. So this is not this, this yourself. Is a whole scenario. No, this, this isn't happening. They're, they're angry about it, like it just happened. And you're sick of it. None of this has happened <laughs> no, yet. I'm just looking at how it will happen. <laughs> Leave them where they were. <laughs> but it's you're like... you're getting angry about things that you're speculating on now. It's absurd, Carl. Not once have that I read here about your anger yourself. about about terrorism or international, you know, political injustice. Not once have you written about that. <laughs> Only about the fact we may send animals back to the Andes. I know, but just because it, it just annoyed me. That's all. They brought them here. Some fellas getting a load of praise because they brought this weird animal into the country, and yet it's like, well, they were they were on the Andes for a reason. Leave them there. It was happier there. I, I mean, I feel guilty when I open a bag and a fly flies out of it, and I think, where's that come from? What bag are you opening with bat flies? What bag? No, just when, like, you know, the bag I took the computer home in, a fly flew out of it, and I thought, when did that get in that bag? Where have I brought that from? And it's the same thing. It doesn't want to be somewhere else. It was where it was. And that's the same with this Palaco, or whatever. <laughs> It's amazing! It really is the ramblings of a madman, isn't it? Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> <laughs> There's no headlines on the news! <laughs> it wasn't found by sea experts, it was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do you I mean? What do you mean? It was- it was- Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um, they thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before, I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's, that's, that's the story. It's just weird how stuff's being found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay though, was it? Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that, I mean, I, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to, if it's a new creature, you don't know what, what makes it happy. <laughs> when you get a kitten, you go, stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. <laughs> if I had a little seashell and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, isn't it? It's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh, with you. <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because <laughs> it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because it might not like pasta. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Well, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed this half hour of drivel. I mean, some of the most stupid things ever said. I mean, it's like he's got a contempt now for the world. Like yeah. He doesn't care what comes out of his head. Learning can be frustrating, <laughs> can't it? You know, you, you, maybe I'm getting you thinking, maybe on your way home today you'll be going, yeah, octopus with two heads. And, and if you do that for five seconds, I've done my job. Good to have a job, innit? So, uh, from me, Vicky Gervais, goodbye. From Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And from Carl Pilkington. All right. Hello, and welcome to, uh, number four in the series of six. Season three of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right.
Uh, yeah, first of all, I'm sorry to do this, but me and Steve have got to bring something up that's been bugging us for a couple of weeks now, but it's, it's reached, uh, you are so fucking lazy, Carl, at the moment. You have time off, right, you go away every weekend, so me and Steve are so precious with, the, uh, you know, so many things to do with extras and books coming out and stuff. You, we, I, I've never seen anyone whinge about going in with kidney stones. I know loads of people that have kidney stones. Not like they've mine. had the, yeah, yeah, no, 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 you say not like that because, uh, they have, they've had the operation. I know people that had their appendix out, right, an actual under the knife operation yeah. and he was back at work the next day and he had a bit of a, a sore side. But you have whinged now for weeks and weeks, everything, you say, oh, I've had this, uh, oh, I've got to go in again. But you're still well enough to go away every weekend to see your folks or your in-laws yeah, well, this is the or, problem. This or is holiday. And, 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 and it's, we are so, but that, you know, sometimes you've got to pull together, mate. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you say keep a diary, mm. and you said make sure you do a diary for a year. Yeah. If I didn't go and visit people and travel the world, what would I do in it? Carl, uh, I read your diary every week. All you seem to do is spend time in a cafe, having a cup of tea and a bit of breakfast. That's this, the weekend, that's when people constantly do stuff. Visiting. Anyway, let's not argue. You don't people even like your family, I thought. Again. It's not my family, is it? Well, you don't, family. you don't but like anyone, work, why are you visiting But you me? say, I'm working that weekend, I'm working that weekend. We have to put, say, oh, what? let's put this in first, you no, know, no, it's a busy fam time. Family's important, isn't it? Yeah. You can't keep messing people But this about. is all you have to do. No, what no, else are you doing? doing? What other job have you got? Loads of you stuff, know. I don't want to go into what I'm doing, but I've got loads but of stuff. But all I hear is you're well, always having meetings. I know, You're always yeah. going for meetings. Yeah, I know, yeah, 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 I don't know what that means, meetings. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, seriously though, so, you've been on your travels, you've got, you know, you've got lots to talk about, so... Yeah, I've got to go know. in hospital again as well, haven't I, so... What's your current state with your old... Oh, you I don't want to go on about it. Well, no, I, I mean, you you know, you've brought it up. It's you're fine, you're well enough to go away, you're well enough to go on holiday, you're well enough to visit people, you went on a train, you went to Manchester, you must be well enough, so you're well enough to do this. I went back to, uh, Bristol at the weekend, I had a bit of time off, as nice. you know, because Carl couldn't do the work. So I know. That's, that's what I mean, yeah. so we all had a nice no, well, no, I didn't. I, I, I went to Bristol when I was working. Oh, that's all right. But well, he's exactly. still visiting a place, is what I'm saying. Well, well that's a ridiculous thing to say. That's like saying a pilot doesn't work, because he's visiting a place. No, because he doesn't visit it. He no, you sit down plane. on your ass. Sometimes you hire a car, so you can't be reading or, or studying. You're driving for six hours. Yeah. I, I went there working. We went to America, we were working. I went to Bristol, I was working. Oh, shut up. Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Getting a bit uppity. The truth hurts, Stephen. <laughs> the truth does hurt, and it's interesting yeah. that he suddenly snapped at you there. I know. Because I wondered to myself, if it weren't for you, Mr Ricky Gervais, what would this man, this little round-headed man, be doing right now? Fuck all, Stephen. Fuck all. Yeah, I went back to Bristol at the weekend, and I'd, as we know, we all had a bit of time off. And, um, uh, actually I was quite annoyed because I, uh, I passed the pub near where my parents live, and they had a band on. You know, pubs sometimes have a band on. And the name of the band, I'm disappointed that I missed them. The name of the band, Rick, was <laughs> Loose Change. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like about Loose Change is it's the least evocative name for a band, isn't it? It's, it's not amazing. sexy, it's nothing. It's got no kind of mood or feel to it at all. Loose, Loose change. change. It's it's just it's uh, welcome rough outline. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's just nothing. The checkbook stubs. <laughs> Pocket fluff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but while I was at my parents' house, they, they often, uh, you know, they keep clippings of things, you know, if, if we've been mentioned in the papers, they like to keep a record of them and stuff, because, uh, I like to show it to my grandparents, you know, and keep, a, you know, keep, keep fully abreast of things. And, uh, they, I, d you know, I managed to find a couple of them. This was what, I don't know if you've heard this, Carl, it's, for people who don't realise, Carl was making a couple of little three minute TV projects recently that were on Channel 4, and in the Sunday Times, they, uh, someone's written a letter about Carl to the Sunday Times. Wow. Uh, they can send in comments and views on things they've seen, read, heard. Oh, excellent. And this is what they, someone wrote to the, uh, Sunday Times. Oh. Who is Carl Pilkington, <laughs> and why have I just wasted five minutes of my life listening to some of his cretinous thoughts on Channel 4? <laughs> he asked, why are there so many dinosaurs on display in museums? Quotes, couldn't they just choose the best one and just show that? He summed it all up by deciding that we know too much. Somebody clearly doesn't know enough to know that this is a complete waste of airtime showing no wit, intellect or creativity. That's from Wendy Robinson in Berkshire. You can't have your critics. You know what I mean? You've got to have your critics. Of course you have. If everybody liked what you did, then you're not doing the right thing. <laughs> you wasted five minutes and they were three minute wonders, so it must have felt yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two thirds as long again. But think how an angry she must have been to have bothered writing this letter to the Sunday yeah. Times.
Well, that's good. I mean, though. you really must have. It's all about getting people thinking. That's what I always say to you. As long as I'm getting people thinking about what I've said, she remembered what I said. But what what views did you put out in these short films, which you feel people perhaps should be talking about, discussing, digesting, thinking about? Uh, just stuff that was in my head that day when I was filming them. Yeah. Is it in your head now? Uh, some of it is. <laughs> re now you've remembered me what I said. Now you've what? Now you've sort of told me what I said in that one. Yeah, I remember saying that. Yeah. And I, st and I stick by it. Remember him some other stuff? Yeah. I'll tell you now, right? This, uh, yeah, if, I don't know if Wendy's, you know, listen to this. But, Almost certainly not. But listen, right? <laughs> I was saying about the, the, uh, museums, right? And how they're big and everything. And they've Brilliant. got dinosaurs all over the shop. I read right. mm. that in the, in that museum, they've got something like, uh, seven million bits of stuff in there, <laughs> right? Now, when I spend two hours in somewhere, just show me the good stuff. Don't be saying we've got seven million bits. Because there was a fella, who, a fella who opened it, right? I did a bit of research on the museum. Fella who opened the museum up, uh... And what was his name? It doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter, does it? What museum was it? It was the London one. Oh, the London one, yeah, okay. So, he's in there, and he's, he's collecting all this, you know, bits of stuff. What stuff? Just whatever's knocking about at that oh, time. Right, okay. just, it seemed like you he, have never, researched it. he never chucked anything away. He's oh, like, right. oh, I won't put it in the bin, pop it on a shelf. Okay, right? so yeah. So he's put everything on a shelf oh, in right, the museum. Yeah. Then, as time oh, I think you're on, going into too much detail, but just give us the gist of it. No, but all I'm saying is, uh, he keeps everything. And if you keep everything, sometimes it'll be good stuff, right? Um, and a lot of the stuff was going missing. The good stuff. But people who set these museums up are just as crafty. <laughs> what? The fellow who found Tutankhamen, he was pocketing all sorts of fingers and stuff in his pockets on the way out. <laughs> that had rings on them and stuff. So all I'm saying is, why is she having a go? But she's hang on, wait, that, I, what's that got to do with someone pocketing? I don't understand your because, point. Because she's sort of moaning at me going, don't have a go at the museum and the dinosaurs. But no, she, but she's having a go at your fatuous you're, point. Yeah, you're absolutely uneducated, but, stupid I mean, I, point I, that you've got, you got TV time to talk absolute shit, if I could, uh, that's not paraphrase my fault, Wendy. That's not my fault. If someone says, do you want me to do a little programme and you can do what I want, I went and did what I did. But, Free speech, innit? But we just gave you the chance then to defend yourself and you just confirmed Wendy's point a thousand times over. What was all this waffle about people nicking stuff? What's that got to do with anything? Because she's having a go at me, I didn't nick but anything. But she's having a go at you for talking uh, uh, nonsense uh, that's of no consequence, which is what you just did that's then. That's not nonsense. But what was your point? Oh, Alright then, well we'll watch Wendy's little programme when that goes out. Let's <laughs> see what she's got to talk about. Sick of her. So anyway, as I say, my mother saves various clippings and things which may be of interest. This was recently in the, uh, Daily Mail, in one of those kind of, uh, gossip columns. Uh, Ricky Gervais's cringeworthy dance routine as managerial buffoon David Brent was undoubtedly the highlight of BBC comedy The Office. Perhaps credit for the scene should not go to Gervais, however, but his lanky co-writer Stephen Merchant. <laughs> for I hear that six foot seven inch Merchant has been attracting a great deal of female attention at the so-and-so pub in North London. Uh, until he took to the dance floor with Brent-esque results. Says my mole, most of the feminine throng looked away in embarrassment. Putting it kindly, he was rather ungainly, like a giant albatross hopping on stilts. <laughs> right, now then. I'll take issue with this, because firstly... You wouldn't be attracting female attention in the first place. Rick, if I had been, I'd have phoned the male myself. <laughs> Point A... Right, I seem to remember distinctly I was talking to one of my mates the whole night and we were discussing about the fact we were too shy to talk to girls. <laughs> so wrong there. Yeah. Point two, as you well know, if I take to the dance floor, which on this occasion I didn't, I remember distinctly not because I love to dance, I would not have been described as a giant albatross hopping on stilts because Carl has seen me dance, you've seen me dance, you know I'm a good mover. Yeah. I, just in the same way that people can't quite understand how Peter Crouch, the same height as me, yeah. is able to be so brilliant on the football field. Yeah. The same, people look at me when I'm dancing, they go, I don't know how that big guy is able to bust some of those kind of moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah. won two dance contests in my life. Those, yeah. those facts, those stats speak for themselves, Rick. I know, I know. I mean, you've seen me dancing, how would you describe me? It, uh, I, I, I think that you look like a, isn't an albatross, isn't so, you look like, um, an upright lizard, right, give, having being given electroshock treatment, and I think that's a lot fairer, isn't it, than the albatross nonsense? Well, I, mm, 
So I'm just trying to picture that because again, I, I was that a compliment? You were on my side, right? You were defending yeah, me. Yeah, a cross between a giant lizard and a, 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 a stick insect. Again, because they don't sound in, 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 straight away. They don't sound like compliments, but I'm assuming oh, you're on okay. my side here. Uh, stick insect with funny glasses. Is that but, again? I, yeah. I just, I thought, mm, I was thinking you were perhaps being a bit touch more supportive, but these, you've not really- Carl, you've seen me dance, what, what, what are your views? Uh, it's just like a bit of weird art. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant! That is brilliant! That's so much better than albatross! <laughs> I wouldn't have said an albatross, because I was looking at one of them the other day, and I don't understand what they mean by that, because they're dying out. They say, you know, uh, <laughs> The dive in the sea. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. Something happened in the brain. It went from the point we were making via an albatross, then it just shot off. It just ping like a pinball. Well, let's hear because it it's going to be another good point. No, it's just saying how because um, I've I've never seen one, and they were saying how would you feel if if you never saw one again? And I was like, you know, I've got by this long without it. <laughs> it's not bothered me. <laughs> but um, good but it was point. it was just sort of saying uh, <laughs> what they do is they dive in the sea sort of put their head under the water, see if there's any fish knocking about, grab one, get out again, right? Yeah. Go to land. I don't know if they're designed to do that. Well, obviously they are. No, because seagulls are, because you see them floating about. Now, what's happening is, they're doing that, but getting caught in nets. Well, that's it. The net shouldn't be there. That's the point. They're totally adapted to their environment, but we came along millions and millions of years afterwards and stitched them up. It's not like people are going, well, the nets were always there. How did they evolve without getting caught in the net? We invented the net. We've only been knocking around for a few hundred thousand yeah, years. but what I'm saying is it's that thing about animals learn by mistakes by other animals. You know, like the monkeys, uh, peeling potatoes. Right. <laughs> That's never happened. They go and put nuts in the salt water to, to salt the nut. Whatever. How does that, how does that get to peeling potatoes? But, uh, because in your head, they were working in a canteen. Making chips. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah! It yeah. doesn't matter what the food is, I'm just saying how they know how to, to sort of prepare I love food. the fact that you don't care what the fact is. When you're discussing facts, that's all that matters. Otherwise, on Mastermind, they just go, um, uh, who wrote Much Ado About Nothing? Dickens? Yeah, close enough, whatever, someone did. It, the fact is the what matters. Yeah, but with that question, that's got a straightforward answer. What I'm telling you is the way that animals work. If it's a potato or a nut, it's a foodage. <laughs> 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 and once again, I return you to my question as before. What's your point? What were you- what point were you making? I'm just saying an albatross will find f- if you're hungry you find food or you change your diet. If you <laughs> don't eat something else you die out. Simple. Said before, if you want a pie but they haven't got any pies, you have a pasty. Alter your diet mm. and an albatross- Drastically. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, pies radical. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Completely changing my diet. No more pies. What are you eating? Pasty. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna eat quiche anymore. I'm gonna have a tartlet. But you, you're getting more and more sort of single-minded in your- No, single-celled. Yeah. It's not, though. I, in your belief that everything you say has got some kind of profound implication and, th and that no one else is listening, that we're all ignorant, all right. we're all not it, listening to what you're saying. Here's another one. Go on. Here's something else I discussed. Oh, come on. This would be good. In series This would be as good as E equals MC squared. The, uh, the people aging backwards idea. Well, it's not an idea. They've done something on it, saying how- No, they haven't. A baby has been messing about with emails. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Oh, yeah, God! A 65 year old doesn't know how to use email. So, again, my system works. Uh, so say if you're an old person, you're- you're not using the internet, but you shouldn't be anyway. Because you should be sort of just getting used to life as an old person. When you're a baby and you're about to die, they're using the internet. I don't know what you mean, when you're a baby and you're about to die. This is if this, it, is if this was your world, idea, if it yeah. was your world. Well, let me just ask a couple Sorry, of questions. Sorry, that makes no sense at all. What you just- uh, that makes no sense at all. I'm just saying that my theory- You may as well have hit a wok. 
What to saying, express that point, because they're, <laughs> yeah. I, the pong, yeah. that would have made more sense. <laughs> so this is why, more profound, this is why more resonant. This is why Wendy's having a go, though, because you're not being open-minded. You're not thinking about- But we're being open-minded to good ideas, to sensible thought, to intellectual considerations. We're not being open-minded to this utter drivel. Yeah, but every invention is a bit- who, who'd have thought the frisbee would have caught on? <laughs> I don't think that can count as an invention, though. Of course it is. People are paying for it. Someone said, I'm going to invent something But you can people chuck are paying out. for carrots. But they're not an invention. Because you pay for something, it doesn't mean it's an invention. No, but a man made thing. A frisbee, is, it didn't grow off a tree, did it? It's, someone's made that and gone, I can sell this. And people are buying it. <laughs> you know, all I'm saying is things, things change, don't they? You know, the albatross is dying out. The way, uh, like, when I walked into the flat, right, we've had hot weather, haven't we? We've had a lot of flies knocking about. Now, when I was younger, I never saw flies sort of hanging about in, in gangs. <laughs> Whereas... <laughs> I don't know what world this is! Would they have little motorbikes? No, you know, just, uh, you'd sort of see one, one would get in the house, you know, my dad would kill it or whatever, but you'd never see three, you wouldn't be going, oh, which one am I gonna get first and everything, they'd, they'd come in, they'd exit out of a window or whatever. Whereas I walked in on, on a bit of activity. <laughs> There's nothing to eat here. Right? <laughs> Three flies in the flat, right? All sort of whizzing around. Right. All together, right? So I just sort of think, oh, you know, let them be. Uh, they seem to be happy. Uh, you know, they, they're playing around with each other, right? Sat down, reading the paper, look up, right? It was like there was, one was trying to, like, have it away with, with one of the flies, and the other one was was a having a go as well. It, it turned out it was a little fly that didn't want any of the action, but two were attacking it. How could you possibly gauge that? <laughs> Just by watching. That's how you learn, isn't it? You watch, you, you watch. But no, this is conjecture again. You had no idea what was going on there. No, I did. It's, it's, it's the way they were sort of jumping on it and stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm not happy with this going on, and, <laughs> you know, under my roof sort of thing. <laughs> My um, house, my rules. But it's, but it's a nightmare because it's small, you can't control it, you don't know which one's which, you might end up sort of pushing out one that's the bad What are you and you're talking pushing out... about? I'm just saying Why are you getting involved? Just because creatures are changing all the time. What are you talking about? What point are you making? I'm just saying the way that flies used to be happy-go-lucky, <laughs> on their own, the sun's out, have a fly about. <laughs> Whereas nowadays, oh now, it was like little attacks going on. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Away! But how could you tell which were the two aggressors and which was the victim? How well, could this, you distinguish? This, this was this was the problem. I mean, all I was looking at was which one they kept attacking, and I was thinking if I can get that one in the bedroom and then get the other Sorry? two out the window. What are you? Just breaking it up because <laughs> uh, what sort of a person would it be to let that go on? <laughs> He has no feelings for anything. He doesn't care if whole species die out. That's, Why are you getting involved? Wrong. That's where you're wrong. Because I think I think more than most people. I think there's a lot of people who just go through the motions. Yeah, they do it's the been... same thing every day. They can do a job, but that's all they stick to. They don't think about what them flies do. Carl, what's that? I've known doing? you for I don't know four years, and all you ever say is things like, "Why do we have jellyfish?" No, I haven't mentioned a jellyfish today. But it's the same old shit. You look at summer, you make up your own story, and then your conclusion annoys you, even though it's totally fatuous. Like I say, the man with the frisbee, what happens if, if he had a mate who said, rubbish that, he wouldn't have done it? <laughs> I love the fact that you think the frisbee is the pinnacle of invention. Yeah. I think it's amazing. No, it's an example of something that... You know, if he was on some programme where you, you know, you said, I've invented this, they'd go, get out. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't give him time of day to say, right, I've made this thing, it's out of plastic, you throw it about. What, what for? Well, you just chuck it about on the beach. What's the point? It was a bit of fun, innit? No, I don't like it. How okay, many and that was an argument with himself. <laughs> no, but do you know what I mean? It's a popular little thing and I'm just saying it's easy to put ideas down. But you've never even come up with an idea as good as the frisbee and that's saying something. I came up with a clippable mat that goes what? on a cup. And it's a, it's a good little thing. I haven't followed it through yet. A what? A clippable mat. What's a clippable mat? What a does that A clippable mat that you stick on a cup, so you, you can put your cup down on a table without having to go, oh, where's that mat? It's, it's clipped to the cup all the time. And you put the cup down wherever you want, because it's got a mat on it. 
I think I've seen that. But why does it have no, to be haven't. clipped? To no, it? Why couldn't it just be built into the cup? Because, uh... So it clips onto, you've got our special cups, it doesn't yeah. clip onto every cup. No, but just the same way that every sauce is different. You don't say, oh, I'm sick of this sauce, it doesn't fit a mug. You, you use the sauce of that, I mean, I don't use sauces. <laughs> just don't buy that sort of But isn't a sauce of what you're talking about? Uh, kind of, yeah, but it's clippable. But why is the clip why is the clippability so important to you? So you don't have to keep finding the, the, the mat when you put the cup down, it's constantly clipped to the to But the why cup. does it have to be clippable? Because that suggests it's removable. Why not just have something where it's constantly attached? What's to stop you from losing that in much the same way as you lose the coasters? Do which we need this, this? Do we need a but, clippable coaster? But let's just, let's ask him like it's the Dragon's Den. Let's okay, ask him yeah. now. What? We've got money to invest yeah. on your clippable right. cup. What's now pitch this idea to us. Tell how would you sell this well, idea you, to you us? You just said, uh, what was your question then? Brilliant. So you're not listening. Let's start no, again. I am. Okay. I, I no, just... imagine you walked in. You've what just is it for? In. What is it for? Is it is it is it a coaster to stop uh, the heat from the cup burning the varnish? Rick, let him explain. Or let's... is it a saucer to stop um, well, look spills? Let's it, let's, let's let's have you pitch this idea to us. Just you've you've never met us before. You were investors. Tell us. Explain this to us. Sell it to us. Right. Um, we're living in a world uh, where furniture is important to people. They spend a lot of money on it, don't they, furniture? Yeah, There's absolutely. so many furniture shops out there. Yeah. All different types of wood from all over the world. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Good if something's point. come from the Amazon, mm. you don't want a coffee stain on it. No, you don't, know. Right. But we're living in a world as well mm. where people don't use saucers. What when, do you mean when they do When you go out and buy, because people What don't... do you mean we're living in a world where they don't use saucers? Yeah, there's loads of saucers, yeah. Because I know people who buy cups singly. Right. Because there's only two people living in a flat, so you don't buy a big box. Because in a big box of, of like plates and that, you get things like, uh, you know, s s uh, what's what's the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate? <laughs> I never, I... <laughs> the plate that's above a saucer but below a plate. <laughs> so it's a plate, but it's below a plate. But it's a size that you sort of go, what am I doing with this? <laughs> So, uh, what would it be? A, a side plate? <laughs> Maybe, but- A plate that you'd have alongside your regular dinner plate, right? Maybe. You put a bread roll on or something in a restaurant. Maybe, yeah, okay. But, but you What's your point? What's no, your point? No, I'm just- it's fascinating to me. Because this is his best attempt now okay. to try and attract investment. Do you know where the- your mats are at home? I haven't got mats, don't use them. Why not? Because, uh, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I haven't got any highly polished, um, uh, furniture from the Amazon. <laughs> Right, Steve, have you got any sort of- I've got some coasters and I use the coasters. And do you know where they are when you need one? Well, yes, because they're always at the place where I would normally put down a mug of hot tea, i.e. Yeah. on a table or a coffee table. Right, now- I keep- if, if I had a, a highly polished table from the Amazon, I'd keep my coasters on it. Yeah, but what I'm saying now is, what happens if you get up with your cup of tea, you're a busy man, right? This yeah. is what I'm saying, we're living in a world where people are busier than Yeah, ever. go on, go on. Not everybody can sit down and enjoy a cup of tea sat in the same place. Right. You get up and you might move into another room. Um, we well, haven't got a, you haven't got a polished table in there from the Amazon. So no, matter. but you might be working on another expensive table. Oh, fine. We'll have a coaster there. That has a they? computer on. My question is this: One, does it fit all mugs, uh, or do I have to buy a special mug to have this special? Well, bit we can we can work it whatever way you want. We can either look at the standard size mug and say let's appeal to everyone, or we can. Get in, in touch with some mug company. How is it clipped? Just like little plastic clips that clip onto it. Yeah. And then you clip it off and you and you clean it. The dishwasher proof, by the way. I, yeah, I think I don't, I, no, but, they don't need that. But at all. why why can't you just make a mug that has something mm, built, built in the in. base of the mug to prevent it from making the mark? No, I don't. It's only the heat that makes the mark, isn't it? Really. I I, I just want to say now, it's a pointless idea, um, and I'm out. Right, but. What about the idea that you've just suggested then, with the mug, with the saucer built in? Yeah. What about, will we, will we do that together? But that's not, that's not your idea, that's my idea. Yeah, but without my idea, you wouldn't have had that. Well, but that's absurd, we're having a conversation, I've come up with an idea, now I've got the money, you, I've want, got the money, and I'm gonna go off with that idea. Yeah, you haven't painted it anyway, and it's a rubbish idea, and you couldn't It's not paint. rubbish, because I've just thought as well, that'll be good for putting biscuits on the side as well. <laughs> Okay, no, that means thing. we can get rid of that plate that I don't know By the way, is. now this is broadcast, you can never patent this idea because it's out in public domain. Rick, 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 why don't we see if there's anyone out there who's willing to invest in this idea? Are you a 
mug manufacturer? Are you a mug designer? Are you someone who's got any interest whatsoever in this idea? Do you think it's a saleable idea? And, more importantly, would it be not great to have a picture of Carl's face on the map? Because it's perfectly round. Perfectly round. As well, and it, you'd scold him every time yeah. you, uh, yeah. So there'd be a certain satisfaction in that. Yeah, well, if Peter Jones is listening, or that Ballantine fella, or, uh, what's his name? Any uh, of the, uh, big uh, investors on that show, or indeed yeah. any investors anywhere, podcast at rickygervais.com. Get in touch. Tell us how, how we can move forward with this brilliant new idea. Hmm? Pathetic. Oh, Jim Martin, that is gone and written it down the little- ah! <laughs> The jingle that signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Got up and put the radio on. I listened to the story that the vicar read on Radio 2. Yeah, that could be good. He was saying how Jesus was 33 when he- when he died. He said he was more into the idea of doing a lot in your life than living for ages. This was linked to the news about the doctor who's come up with some stuff that he's been injecting himself and his wife with that makes you age better. I looked it up on the internet. It wasn't worth them doing it because they are already old looking. I don't know why people want to stay looking young. You can wear a bald head better if you're old because hairs are replaced by wrinkles. That's drivel. No, it's, it's not drivel, it's pointless, just- A pointless entry to a diary, that. It's not, because that could be a, 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 like an important bit in like world history. What? The fact that, that people, that someone's trying to make people not age. Age is good, isn't it? When you see an old person- But has been going forever. What has? People trying to age better. No, but he's talking about if you're 90, he wants people to look like they're 30. And that's not good, because how, how would the world run when that's going on? Well, I agree. But you know, it's, when people- Again, it's not a revelation. If I, if, if I like chatting to old people, because they know a lot of stuff. So if I'm sat on a train and someone's old, I'm happier talking to them about- They get up and move after about ten minutes. Well, no, he likes the they, fact that many of them are infirm and can't. <laughs> yeah, they, they have to stay there and listen to this but, one. But yeah, even that, even that means that they're getting more out of life in a way, because they don't move about as much, so they have more thinking time. It is weird how that happens to you as you get closer to death. Jesus. You know, you're not working as much. Because you're resting and you can think back about your life and you can think, oh, I had a good one. Actually, it's not been that bad. Whereas if- But you must have started that now. Because you've been doing nothing for the past three months. Yeah, but I'm just, well, that's, like I'm saying, it is a good thing for you to do to sort of think about what you've been doing with your days and your weeks. And, and how stuff. do you assess your life so far? With all this spare time you've had on your hands and moping around and moaning about your illness and just sitting around, right? You've been uh, introspecting, have you? Yeah. Go on then. What have you come up with? I haven't come up with anything. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I have, I have an all right life, and things are changing. Oh, keep saying that. No, but, they, but you don't know how much they are changing to the point of, I don't know if I mentioned the squirrel eating Mars bars, but from that, <laughs> from, from, from that happening to monkeys opening bottles with lids on them, to, it's just, it's, it's mental out there. It's madness what is going on. And all I'm saying is old people need to be old people. You need oldness. You need to see old people. You need to go, right, they might have a solution. They've been on the earth longer. Quick, we need an answer. How old are you? I'm 32. Well, you look 78. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying! I don't know who that conversation was with, why you got angry, and I think you made the opposite point that you were making yeah. at the beginning. If you say you're 32, you look 78. No, you were saying about it'd be a problem if you were 78 and looked 32. Well, I don't know what you're saying. You came down the wrong side then. Either. You did that whole thing and you bollocksed it up again in your brain. I'm just saying, either way, you need to have people who look old. Otherwise, who's in charge? <laughs> What do you mean? Right. So you say even if so, you're saying it'd be all right to make seventy-eight year olds look thirty-two as long as there were some thirty-two year olds that look seventy-eight. As long as you've got old-looking people. No, but say. Can like, I tear this page out? Because <laughs> it's worthless. What I mean is, when I went to the doctors, oh. I saw the specialist, right, mm. about the kidney stones. I was I was asking him all the straight questions. Go on. Is it life-threatening? No. Uh, you know how long am I going to be out? A couple all the of days. Of it, right now. He As it turned out, it is life-threatening and you've been out for three months whinging about the fucking thing. Strange. Now, he was quite old. He looked about <sighs> 55. And that reassured me in a way. In a way it didn't, because he's, he, he's one of them doctors who didn't open his eyes much and I kind of thought, I hope you open them I don't know what wider. you're talking about. What do you mean? What? What do you mean he didn't open his eyes much? One of those sort of doctors who's either that overworked, that he's, he, he does that, you know, when he's like, he's tired, so he's going, right, what we're going to do is, and he's doing that with his eyes shut, he's talking well, this like is, that. this is radio. I know, but I'm telling you, so you can see. 
But the people are meant to be listening to this. But if they can't imagine me with my eyes shut. Well, tell them you got your eyes shut. Just right, say yeah. he had his eyes shut. Yeah, he had his eyes shut. Oh. Had he been reading this? No. <laughs> Bored stupid, I imagine. He's just trying to get a. But oh. do, do you know what I mean? I, or, I don't know if it's because he's tired or if he's that educated that some people know so much you don't even have to look at it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Intelligent people. Who is so educated that they don't need to open their eyes? Well, you see it, you see <laughs> like... Who is that? So, who's that bloke up there? Is he blind? No, he's been reading too much. <laughs> He no. doesn't open his eyes anymore, doesn't no. he? No. Old, old people who you see wearing tweed and what have you and they're really posh and they talk and whenever they talk their eyes are shut and they I open- I don't know what this observation is. I don't understand why you've never seen that. I've never seen an old educated man wearing tweed who doesn't bother open his fucking eyes. Steve, I don't you? know what you're talking about. Steve, have you seen- do you know what I mean when people don't sort of open their eyes when they're like talking to you and it can be quite annoying because it's like they're saying, I'm not interested about you sat there, I'm not bothered if you're listening or not, I'm saying what I'm saying because I say what I say. And but it can be quite if, he, if he has got his eyes closed, he's probably just trying to absorb what you're saying and, and think carefully yeah, about probably. it, so anyway, he doesn't misdiagnose I'm not, you. I'm not having a go at him. Well, it I'm like just saying what? he was fifty odd, and I was happy that he was there telling me. <laughs> I don't know why you were watching his eyes when he was telling you about your insides. Because you can tell a lot by people's eyes. That's what I said about jellyfish. But you know, just lines in a face tell a few stories, and I don't think we should get rid of them lines. Brilliant. Wise words. Well, that's the end of, uh, show number four in this third series of the Ricky Gervais Show. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Our Freaks Electric, Richard Eccles, Sugar Babes on XFM 104.9, Steve. Absolutely. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello. Carl, the, uh, the producer. Seven minutes past one of a Saturday, and what a lovely Saturday it is. It is indeed. By, well, it, it looks nice and bright, but it's deceptive, because I went out, and I just had a t-shirt on, and I had my jumper on me. I got out there, and I thought, this is chilly, <laughs> I, had to pop, I had to pop the jumper on. Oh, no! So, uh, it's you me. know, just be careful, if, you, if you're just, uh, you know, looking out the window thinking, I'll, I'll go outside, pop a jumper on, or, or, or a jacket, because it looks nice, but it is a little bit colder than it looks. Rick, can I ask, were you wearing the jumper around your waist, tied with a knot, or did you have it over your shoulders, like maybe- I you just jumped off a yacht. I popped it round my waist, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I tucked my t-shirt in for neatness and comfort. Lovely. But I know, even I know that's a little bit dorky, so sure. I was trying to hide the belt line. Okay, okay. So, okay. uh, then I popped the jump on, didn't have to worry about it, Did so now you go with the double knot? I didn't, I did, uh, uh, cause that can loosen if you're not careful, especially if you're carrying bags or you're busy on the tube. I know, but I wouldn't mind that, as long as I didn't lose it, as long as I saw it loosen and fall, I'd, I'd <laughs> okay. pick it up. And You'd then, uh, devastated if you and then clean it. Not in the uh, washing machine though. Go just on. I pop it in a cold wash soak, right, okay. and then leave it out on a few towels or something, or pop it over the radiator. So what's the problem with uh, putting it in a hot wash? Well, it can cause shrinkage. <laughs> oh no! So uh, <laughs> coming up, we've got lo loads of tunes. We're going to be playing um, some of the best bands around, some uh, some new ones, some old ones. Might even play some um, uh, Adamant. We don't know yet. <laughs> Let's have uh, Badly Drawn Boy there, shall we? Come on. Current single. <laughs> Badly Drawn Boy there. Silent sigh. Is that the one with the duck? Yes. Yeah. Video. Apparently he stopped wearing his hat around because he keeps getting recognised. And he's gonna not wear his hat when he doesn't want to get recognised. Okay. Maybe pop it in the wash. Mm. I mean, be careful, let's just have a kind of a light cold well, rinse. Well, yeah, light cold rinse, soak it, yeah. right, cos it's woollen, right, mm. and then just leave it out on a towel. Or, you know, maybe mm. in, you know, near the immersion heater. Yeah, sure. Or over a radiator. Well, or even the radiator, is that a problem? It can <laughs> cause that sort of, you know, <laughs> damaging to okay. the fibres of the wall. He had, well, a, he had a kid last week. Did he? Yeah. Who did? Badly drawn boy. Oh right, okay. Dad, Badly drawn little boy, he's yeah. gonna call it, isn't he? Brilliant, Rick. Yeah. Well done. It's a <laughs> sort of satire. Mm. I'd like to see that as a headline in a tabloid. Stand and deliver, oi oi money, you your life. <laughs> oh. Um, now, <laughs> go here. Oh, Carl, can we explain panic. why that's funny? Don't panic, Carl, I'm a professional. Don't worry. What's your concern, Carl? What's your concern? Nothing. Tell us. <laughs> no. You can say. You I can can't. You can! This is so unprofessional. It's- what? What- what have we done? What, talking about wool? Right. <laughs> Come on, Carl, what's the problem? What's the problem? You say. <laughs> he's great, and he's He's lovely. so scared. Um, Come on, Carl, what's- tell us. I don't know all the ins and outs, so I don't want to get into it. What? The thing. No, well, you look, can, you can't- the people are perplexed now. What's the- what's the thing, Carl? What's the thing? What are you worried about? Say. Is it, is it an email? 
that's been received by the head of yeah, XFM. You, you've got the email open. You can talk room. about it, you can say what it is. Okay, yeah, let me just without, I don't understand it. Please know that under, uh, under a ruling at the Old Bailey, any yeah. reference to Adam Ant's state of mental illness in any news report will constitute a breach of the ruling and therefore lead to serious action from his lawyers. That's right, and that's true. Subject, we can't, we can't talk about that. You can uh, play his records and sing his classic sing, songs. Sing songs. Yeah, well, it's best just to leave it, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what we, yeah, Carl was a little bit worried. There's no way I was gonna mention that or influence anything and I totally agree with the law, so don't, don't panic, Carl. That should have never been sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because it's like, you know, accidents happen. Go when, on then. When things like that happen, right, you know, you've been told not to mention it. Yeah. And you're like a little kid. Yeah. And, and once things are in your head. Yeah. It's difficult not to mention it. I mean, when, uh, <laughs> when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Me, uh, <laughs> my, my mum's sister, Hazel. Right. Was, was seeing another bloke. <laughs> um, it's weird because she's a lesbian now. That's really good. <laughs> that must have been an interesting Christmas. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, he's seen this bloke and he looked like Ken Dodd, apparently. He right? looked like Ken Dodd. He looked like Ken Dodd. <laughs> so people said, "Don't mention it because it gets it gets on his nerves when you when you like meet him and you go, oh god, you look like Ken Dodd.'" <laughs> so I said, "All right, his name is Will or whatever." And uh, I was introduced to him. First thing I said, "Nice to meet you, Ken." <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it as a joke, or did you- No, no, because, you know when you know, that he's like, I'm not allowed to say that. I yeah. Can't say that. I can't, mustn't say that, can't, and then yeah. I saw him, I thought, Jesus, does look like him. <laughs> it <just> came out. <laughs> was it Doddy you turned her into a lesbo, do you think? Well, he wasn't a good looking bloke, so, yeah. possibly. She started going out with Esther Ransom, though. <laughs> which is, which is weird, out of the frying pan. What was the story with the lesbianism, then? Did, 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 how did she announce that to everyone? What um, age was she when she realised? Well, we, we, I mean, we're not a close family, do you know what I mean? We're not no. a close family who keeps in touch with everyone. And I think my mum called her up one Christmas and sort of said, you know, how's, how's, how's the Diddy Will? men? How's the Diddy men? <laughs> yeah, how's Nutty uh, Ash? And yeah. she said, oh no, I'm not, I don't do that anymore. Um, I'm knocking about with Sandra or whatever. Right. And it was like, oh right. Not big butch Sandra with the big earrings and the skinhead. <laughs> Used to live down the road from you. I, I don't know. Used I, to I get met. Doc Martens wholesale. That's Sandra. <laughs> but but she lived, she had a haunted house. Go on. Um. <laughs> Who's Sandra? No, Hazel. Right. This, is this before she was a lesbian or not? Before. Okay. Mm. And um, there was a bike in the hall and the pedals used to go backwards. <laughs> there was a what in the hall? A bike. <laughs> 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 that's handy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, okay. that's great. Don't worry, we won't do, do anything. So, th sorry, no, there was, I want to know about the ha haunted house. There was mm. a bike in the hall and what There was happened? a bike in the hall and the pedals used to go backwards on their own. And also, shoes used to stick to the wall or something. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> shoes used to stick to the wall? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That <laughs> sounds like a- That's all it comes A household. Yeah. Well, oh dear. Are. Brilliant. Maybe she should clean the walls. The Lars, and there she goes. What a great start to a show. We've had- we've had 20 minutes of some of the- the best banter, chatter and music and anecdote anywhere on the- Dial. You're damn right. High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sweet man, sweet. Oh, uh, what are we talking about? Um, now, oh, oh, well, I, I love that track. It's lovely. I, I, they've got a bit of the, the Liverpool gene pool, haven't they? That sort of doddy. You know what I mean? I like the Scouse sort of look, you know, the Scylla Black and the Stan Boardman. Yeah, it's, it's sort particularly of, it's sort unique of, it's, to Liverpool. It's isn't sort it? of happy and teeth and ears. And, <laughs> it's happy I mean? and teeth and ears. Yeah. <laughs> what a brilliant description. Yeah. Happy and teeth and ears. <laughs> yeah, that's just three of my <laughs> friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, We've got a great track lined up, haven't we, Carl, that I've bought in? So I'm gonna go off. Now, I'm not ashamed. As you know, me and Steve aren't worried about being part of a trend or, or, you know, being trendy or jumping on about it. Steve particularly doesn't worry about, like, looking good or, well, you know. Uh, no, no, I'm saying. No, I, as it's a compliment, you don't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't worry about walking along like that or, you know. Well, like, this is, like a, I'm looking good. No, no, no. Good but I'm saying good. you don't mind the insults freak boy or goggle eye or. Uh, swore off a duck's back, mate. You know what I mean? Or, or a new phrase that's been coined because of Steve's phrase, water off a frog's back. Who's saying that? Uh, just a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of your, what? a lot of friends and that. But I what, mean. My friends? Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of the people hey, you, Can you, you name names or? I, I can't really. No promises, you can't. I, I can't. I can't really. Cross anyone up. I, I think it's the cagoule. Looks good. It does look it's good. It's waterproof, Rick, and it's also stylish. I wear nothing underneath. So it's tight oh. to the skin. It gets sticky oh, in weather. Oh, yeah. is that why you sort of it's rustle? Sexy. But what's, so what's, what's all the, is there abuse? What's the No, no, they just say. Because I'm pretty trendy guy, but I, I, as you say, I cut my own trend. You know, I make my own style. You know, that, consequently, the pipe. You don't feel that's an affectation? I, I don't think, I think because you're young and tall, yeah. the pipe looks a little bit silly. Go on. I mean, I know you're, wor you're worried about because we've already lost the trilby. Well, I'm worried because pipes are going to die out. I mean, this is the problem. That there's no young people now who are taking up the pipe. 
as a smoking device. Is there's there no anyone? Young is there anyone under the age of what should we say? Oh, we've said this 25? before, and I don't think there was there was no one. I think there was some nutty old woman who phoned in and said, "I smoke a pipe." But yeah. I'm talking about you know, because years ago it was like an Oxbridge student, you know, you'd be at Cambridge or something, you'd have a, a lovely pipe, you know, tweed suit, you'd be there studying. That was you know, and that was the young gent always smoked a pipe. But no one is now. I, I'll tell you this: in the year 2050, there'll be no pipes. They won't exist. Well, I think all all um, drugs like uh, nicotine and alcohol will be banned, and we won't uh, we won't be allowed to think our own thoughts. We'll have to live in the sewers like eating rat burgers That's or true something, enough. won't we? Yeah. And it would have to download our memories or something. Oh probably. God! And I, I but I'll be a rebel, Rick. I'll just no, be down there listening to jazz. No, you won't. Yeah. You'll, you'll just have a little chip in the back, and you'll be you'll be going out with a big fat man with a big toga on, and will be and you'll be you'll be touching him. But well, I think it's a beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you will. Yeah. yeah, and I'll be fighting with the. The Rebel Underground. No, you won't. I will. No. I will. I'll you be dead, won't I? <laughs> you'll be dead, yeah. I'll be dead, yeah. In 2050, you will. I'll be dead. Unless you, because obviously you're becoming quite wealthy now. You're becoming a very rich man, obviously, from all your, you know, I'll celebrity have brain, endorsements. I'll have my brain put into a robot. <laughs> exactly. Made of titanium, and yeah. I'll have it, oh. Would you it, be cryogenically frozen if you could do it? I would, but I'd leave myself out on a towel. <laughs> right. Never, because if you do it too quickly, you, there is shrinkage. You've got to be careful. Did you read in the paper this week? This is true. Apparently, the, um, the world's oldest man, who's 113, lives in some little part of Japan. Sure. Like, little island in Japan. Yeah. But apparently, the world's oldest woman also lives in exactly the same place. Now, I don't know if she's since died, but she lived in the same place as well. Do you not think there's something suspicious going on there? I mean, isn't that a bit eerie to I'm, you? I'm thinking, have you ever seen them together? <laughs> And have, has he ever, have you ever found lipstick in his bag? <laughs> I think that would be one and the same. I wonder if it's something like, you know, what, what, what brought Godzilla back? There's some kind of, there's oh, some antics no. over there. No, there, there might be, might they're sort of like, yeah. Although, just hearing like, some of Carl's stories about school, there's somewhat going on there where he lives. Yeah. Did you say you did live near a sort of, um, nuclear plant or something? I found out it wasn't a nuclear plant, it was a chemical plant. <laughs> My God. Yeah. Really? And is that, is that really true? What colour was the yeah. tap water in your area? It was better than it is in London. Right. Really? I was talking to someone about this the other day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> water in London's ropey. Um, and, and I use one of them water filters. Do you really? And the guy down in the office was saying it's a waste of time though, because they only work for a couple of water, like you fill your jug twice, and then the water's going through the same muck, isn't it? That's true enough. But so it's not, if it's not work. getting through, it's not getting through? No, but If it's, it's a filter, it doesn't matter, does it? It's still not good though. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Good point. So you just, are you just throwing it away based on what that bloke <laughs> said? <laughs> did, did he sell, it did he sell you another one that he had on <laughs> yeah, him? Did a, he better, <laughs> a better updated model. <laughs> yeah. Did he have a suit and a When you say, like, he works here, was he actually <laughs> hanging around outside? Yeah. Did, did he with have a, a suitcase with, with a lots of these in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Talk dear. About, so just go back to insults briefly. Go on. You know you're saying... <laughs> Oh, no, no, I, uh, see, that's... Goofy, that's no, not No, no, fair. no, because that's, that's what he said, it's in the head. I, what I, do you mean he said no, that? When did he no, say that? No, no, I mean... When did, did you call me Goofy? No, he didn't. I he didn't. said about what's in the head. Hey, no, when it's, come on. Come off it. Don't what, start who's calling me Goofy? No. I'm not even Goofy. No. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you I can sort your account. Well, I can't. But yeah. do you know I can, how can I sort my lookout? I'm not even Goofy, you've that's got, not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just need to sort it out a bit. I can't help it if, if my hair's not good. I noticed the other day when <laughs> Carl was sitting on your knee having his picture taken, yeah. it's a long story, right? <laughs> yeah. He's got a completely spherical head. It's slightly too small. I'm not being funny, because I mean, you know, well, I'm not perfect. <laughs> 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 but he's got a completely spherical little head. He looks a little bit like a baby hamburger. You know hamburger off, um, uh, McDonald's? Sure. He looks like a little baby hamburger. And it's sort of quite put upon. It's S Suzanne thinks a lot like that thing in that <laughs> Hulix advert. Do you know when the woman pulls the head off that? <laughs> that little plasticine yeah, morph type. And then they creep. make a new ad for it. And it's like a little ad. <laughs> <laughs> really? And that's your girlfriend saying it. I know. Anyway, listen, let's let's get back to uh, uh business here. This is uh, a great track. It's America by Simon and Garfunkel. This is what I started saying we don't care about being trendy and all that. That was it. <laughs> Strokes, last night, XFM 104.9, we're flying now, 35 minutes into it. <laughs> no real, no real hiccups, I don't think that Not I- Not so far. And that, oh, it's just going really well, my name's Ricky Gervais, with me Steve. Hello there. Carl. Alright. All right. Coming up soon, white van man, white van Carl. We ask Carl the questions that the son asked someone else. <laughs> exactly. It's a good feature. It's a great feature. I'll be testing Carl on the new, the, the new re-education of Carl, as you know. He got a GCSE. It's the last one, isn't it? It's in weird. history. It was the last heavy 
sort of one, yeah. No. And so Winston Churchill. We, yeah, because we've got, we got, we're going on to more sort of uh, metaphorical and metaphysical uh, sort of uh, pursuits, aren't we? Not that book. Yeah, that's the uh, Aesop's Fables. I can't fables. read that in a week. You don't have to read oh, it. Right, just choose fine, out, yeah. just choose the ones about the foxes eating penguins. You'll like that. Steve, over to you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I wonder if I don't think we've uh, made much progress yet on uh, sending Carl into sort of uh, into the air with the. No, moves. this has gone a bit ballistic. I've actually, got the idea. Uh, oh no, shut no, up! No, don't you? Haven't but gone the, off the, yet. We've 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 inflamed the imagination of the capital. There's people offering left, right, and centre, and uh, I think it's a good idea. But I think we, we should we should uh, you know make a day of it. I think we should send you up in some balloons, right? Maybe. Uh, you know. I well, hang on. I, let's, I, before we carry on, let's explain what happened because people might not have listened last week. I don't believe that. <laughs> there are one or two, Rick. I don't believe that. People who were Name ill, them. maybe out of the country. Okay. Um, yeah, so last week we discovered, was it that 623, uh, is it 6,000? No, I read that 6,000 balloons filled with helium can lift a bloke off the floor. I think that's too many. I think that's too many. I think we could do it for less, certainly. Well, anyway, you. listen, there are various <laughs> organisations which actually exist already that can provide this kind of entertainment, this kind of fun. I mean, I didn't realise there was a whole kind of market for this already, but apparently there Nor is. Nor did I, know. Incredible. Anyway, um, so we're going to try and track one of them down. We're going to see if they can, they can, uh, organise it so that you, Carl, can float into the air. We need to get you, what, is it at least 11 feet up? Yeah, if it's and just I think a certainly higher. I mean, I can't remember what the record is, but it's quite a long way. Eleven thousand, eleven thousand feet. Yeah, yeah, but I think they're all official. We're, I want to do it with like little <laughs> those little balloons you get for a quid at the zoo. Or I don't something. think that can be right, health and safety wise. I don't think that can be healthy. I, just, I, 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 I think as we, if we get him to sign some up, which I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll cover our sounds. But yeah, certainly we're thinking of maybe making it a bit like um, was it is it tea in the park. The yeah. Uh, capital FM, uh, yeah, event, the, you know, the big event. You could get sort of steps, at least H from steps can come down and yeah. host the event. I mean, uh, oh, oh, I don't mind, uh, comparing it. Steve's gonna do, uh, Steve's learning to sort of like scratch and mix and beat match and he's, I mean, you're getting pretty... I'm making a lot of progress, yeah. I'm you're, 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 are gonna be a turntablist. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Steve never learnt an instrument, which he regrets, you know, and, uh, mm. you know, he's a modern lad and, uh, he's, uh, he's using t uh, turntables as his instrument. I've just I got two turntables and a microphone, and so far, I mean, I, seriously, I'm cutting out big style. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't laugh, because it is mental, the sort of kind of stuff I'm coming out with. And I'm scratching, I've got, I've got the, the beats, you know, matching. Can you imagine that? Shut up, it's that, that no, 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 if, if... Look at the Chemical Brothers, for goodness sake, if you're talking about freaks, look at those things. <laughs> Man alive! At least you cut your hair at Gavin. You know that the Whatever reason, it's called. Uh, they used to kind of at least faintly appear in their videos. So this yeah. one is just some shots of, like, what you see from outside a train. I that's know. Is, to them, that is more... More glamorous and exciting, apparently, than yeah. seeing the lads themselves in the video. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes! You're absolutely right, Carl, and that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on, on some music, yeah. if he had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I would <laughs> see... I can't believe this is- this No, is just happening. so you don't look as tall, that's doing you a favour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was on the, this is true, I was on the, uh, uh. on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there, like an old guy, he picked up the phone, he went, Oi! Uh, Lanky, you dropped your mobile phone! <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew who he meant. I bet you turned round straight away. <laughs> it worked. You knew who he meant, Steve. Yes, but He's done you again. But He's I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was, was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then. No, but my point was there was no one else at all who was about to exit the train. Okay, so he didn't need lanky. He could have gone, excuse me, sir, or oi you, anything, but oi lanky. I know. It's that thing though, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about. You say the thing that you don't want to say. It's like me with Ken Dodd and Will. I think he wanted to say this. Oh well. <laughs> I think he took pleasure in it. <laughs> he, I think he went, that bloke's lanky. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Why lanky? What's he gonna do? Phone. Yeah. Do you I want your phone back or not? But this balloon thing, anyway, I, I, it's got a bit out of hand. Why is no. it got out of hand? What are no, you No, it's about? funny. I just wanna- I want- you know, you know I wanna sort of like tie them all to the back of your belt, so as you go up there, you sort of tip forward <laughs> slightly, so yeah. you're going up slightly upside down. We could paint some advertising on your bald head. On your- yeah, oh that'd be great. Yeah, we'll do that, lanky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great! Here he comes. No, I mean- Last week it was just a bit of fun about going like, just lifting my feet off the ground. No. And that's a big difference to what it's got now. No, okay, well, I'll tell you what, we'll do a hundred feet in the air and we'll- and I'll hold on to the rope. <laughs> but we'll do it at Wembley Arena and we'll sell tickets. <laughs> but it'll be for charity, Carl. No, it'll be for charity. Too. No, we'll have lots of underprivileged kids coming along to see it's it, just you know. Out of hand. It's like, um, you know, I, I like karaoke. 
but I wouldn't want to go on stars in their eyes. Sure. And it's, it's got out of hand, that's how it's sort of, it's grown too big, I don't Who like would you it. do if you were on stars in their eyes? I'd do that, uh, Moby? Ja no, that Jack the Knife song. I love Jack that. the Knife. <laughs> Old Mac Heath. Uh, the... That one, yeah? yeah. It, it's Mac the Knife. That's what I do. <laughs> but which, who, which- Maybe he'd, he'd do a hip hop version. <laughs> but which of the many singers would you impersonate? You can't, it's not the song, is it? It's, it's uh, the singer. You could do, um, Jimmy Somerville, I think. Quite well. Yeah, Somerville you'd be uh, good at. Moby. Um, did Morph bring out a single? I don't think Morph did. Didn't he? No, I'm not sure. I'm sure didn't he have Morph. a theme tune, did Morph? Phone in if you think Morph- Morph didn't speak, Rick. Let didn't him he? sing. Morph hardly had any features. True. Right. <laughs> Express 2 featuring David Byrne, Lazy, XFM 104.9, Quarter to 2, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm just gonna, We're white just gonna be doing Van White Van Carl, where we ask Carl the questions the sun Asked some other bloke. That's right. Because okay. we think Carl's got more to say than anyone on anything. Yeah. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just remember that, listeners. Off you go. Yes, um, well, today's white van man in the sun is John Slade. He owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But Carl, what do you make of, uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager for a documentary. Are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically a 30-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into, um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's, uh, you know, any, for you, you know, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before, um, there's loads of kids at my school. I remember being in the first year and kids who, what did, what year do schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the first year. What what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry. First year of infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right. Year eleven. Um, kids no. have beards. And no, stuff. not year eleven. They're eleven when they first go to secondary no, school. No, right. Well, I'm eleven. The kids at the uh, at the older well, end. There, there's a well, there's fifth form. And then you can leave form when you, you can right. leave when you're sixteen. I think, can't you now? Right. Well, kids who were sixteen. Yeah. Looked old. They had they they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. I think he's answered that. Next one, what's the next yep. one? Tattoos <laughs> and everything. Um, I think uh, kids in the, in the earlier years, even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's £38 million payoff has cost EMI staff uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on £38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because, uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's gonna do the work? <laughs> <laughs> you think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have, they should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Vicious circle, that. <laughs> right. Have you, have you done, you've done a business degree or anything, have you? You did commerce. Yeah. Where, where did you do that? Where did you do that? At school, I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a check. <laughs> Pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you get a, did you get an O level or GCSE? Uh, we know he didn't. You know. Uh, <laughs> but was uh, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of maths? Well, did he fill out a was check? It a subset of it maths. It was an option. It was like if you want to do it, you can. <laughs> what was it? Fill, fill out, out a check. check fill pay, out a check, bill, pay a bill. Pay a bill. bill. Have a visit right now. I went down Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time. He sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? What was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and. <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space dust or whatever it is. Space dust? <laughs> so, sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, though. No. <laughs> that was someone else, wasn't it? That was an aunt. <laughs> that was, yeah, yeah. That wasn't special K. Okay. Oh, dear. What well, about this then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird this. Because when I was out with you- I don't believe it's gonna be weird, whatever you say, Carl, no, go when on. No, we, when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is, um, what I tend to do, because I nearly got mugged once, act You mental. what? You nearly got mugged once? I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And, uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester, it was quite late one night. Mm -hmm. And he come up, he said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. I said, how dare you come to me asking, and I, I got a bit livid, and I, 
he looked at he looked at me like, oh my god, he's got a right one here, and he left me. Were you acting mental or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetra petrified though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you. Clearly, you're a brave man. So, what did you say? <laughs> I, ju I just, I just, I just went, I just went a bit mad. I just kind of, because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time. And uh, I just, no, you're not having these. I said, I've crafted. You, I said, I wanted these trainers. Yeah. And you know, went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it and. You know, I put in all these hours and that, and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I did he give you his trainers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? No, I just left. No, he didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. good advice though. Just that mental. Um, uh, <laughs> See, what's it? Should he tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Well, she says, oh, well, "I've worked hard for these diamonds." <laughs> yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally. Uh, apparently, um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Crook. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently, security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another? Yeah. Two million. Yeah. Why? Why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> Um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches, in like, when you're <coughs> on a plane? They're like £8.50 <coughs> for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean, why is all this money at airports? What, what is it doing there? Why is Have it a go, just... have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about... Paying bills and writing out checks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? It's pretty boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts, um, yeah. boxes of cornflakes everywhere. Just what you imagine. Yeah. I so was it more? This is where you it. might be working. <laughs> this is where you're likely to work. Possibly. If you there was two trips. There was that and a trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in. Um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> Cordon uh, Bleu, what's that? It's like so a supermarket. Yeah? And I, I had to leave the trip early and the teacher went mad saying uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. Well, you didn't tell anyone? Or, no, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. How old were you? stuck in a printer. Um, <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> in a printer. I don't know. What was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> you worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon Bleu. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. Got sacked. You had to what? What'd you get sacked for? for? Messing about in a um, the, back in the in the car park round the back. Yeah. Uh, it was there was a grid, and uh, all the concrete had gone funny. So when it rained, you got like a big lake. Oh yeah. Right. And I got in, do you know those big metal trolleys you get to like put all the food in while she's Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. I got in one of them and pushed myself out into this lake. Of cement? No, of I water. was full oh, of water because right, it'd been right, raining. Right. And I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans. And <laughs> I was like, hey, <laughs> he was so, stranded in a lake. So someone said, oh, you, like, I saw him messing about out the back. He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this. <laughs> <laughs> lake in, like a, in a trolley, and he said, "Get back in." I said, "Would you say no? I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks." I said, I'm, I'm, "It's too deep. I can't get out. You'll have to pass me something." And he said, "I'm not passing you nothing." He said, "You can get out of there and walk through it." I said, "I'm not. I've got my trainers on. Probably the same ones." Yeah, you've risked your life for them. Yeah. I said, "I'm not getting these wet." I said, I, "He said, what are you going to do?" I said, "I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid." He said, "The grid's blocked. Now get out, or you're sacked." I said, "Well, I'm not getting out." He's right, you sacked. So, so you were sacked, how long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end I did get bored and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Maybe about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> just think of it! <laughs> just think! I mean, how did he get himself into that situation? <laughs> That's fantastic! Should we play a record? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's a joy. Oh, you're an absolute pleasure. More White Van Man next time <laughs> on the show. Uh, Electric Soft Parade. I keep trying to get the album for free from you, Carl. You've not sorted me out yet. I have to rely on other people to give me uh, different copies. No, I did try. Tracks. I'll keep trying. <laughs> Please do. This is one called There's a Silence, Electric Soft Parade. Um, <laughs> Gomez and Shot Shot on XFM 1.9. Uh, sorry, um, 
I was going to tell Steve something. Um, talk amongst yourselves. When you were out there, um, Johnny Mango phoned up and said to Carl, come on, when are we going to do this thing? And Carl got all nervous. Right, and uh, uh, he went, y- you don't want to do it, do you? He went, he said, well, I just, it's going to get out of hand. I just wanted to go as high as a tree. And uh, he went, well, you can. We just I'll hold you down with a rope. He went, yeah, but he said, but when the crowd are there and they're all screaming higher, higher, I feel the pressure and I have to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> what crowd? <laughs> <laughs> what crowd is this? Higher. No, higher. We don't live in a, like, a medieval era. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be dancing bears and tumbling midgets. Well, I don't know, oh, that's an well, idea. Hold on, uh, if there's anyone got any of those... Tumbling Some midgets would be amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Less balloons, cheaper to do. Oh, you're going no, up with No, you're going up with them. No, you're going up with not just, no. With a midget under either arm. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, it's time for your, uh, the re-education of Carl Pilkington. Uh, this week Carl was studying, uh, the life and times of Winston Churchill. Um, what did you make of it, Carl? What, what, what did Churchill do for right, you? La- well, last week I made a bit of an error with Hitler. Yeah, you didn't try to it. remember too much and it just, it was way too much for me. Sure. So what I've done this week, sort of flicked through, got a few of them basic facts. Yeah. And what I've learned, right, <laughs> um, a bit weird the way all these people have something in common that they're all a bit weird when, the, when they're younger. Okay. They've got go on, what's, illness. What's, go on. Well, you know, Rasputin, he, he wasn't well. As a kid, yeah. Che Guevara. Oh, was it, this is Rasputin in the Mad Monk, wasn't well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, che Guevara. Yeah. Um, asthma. Asthma. Really bad asthma. Yeah. Uh, Hitler. He was only a one b- ball. bit mental. Yeah. <laughs> only one. His mother. He got was what, a bit mental. That could be libelous. <laughs> 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 yeah. And um, uh, who've we done? And Churchill. Yeah. Um, very weak, there. very weak child. Was he? Um, he only spoke to his dad four times in his whole lifetime. Really? Yeah, didn't get on with his dad. Right. And I think one of the times when his dad spoke to him, he, he was having a go, saying, um, he didn't do as well in the army as he wanted him to. Right. So that's, that's a pretty sad bit I picked yeah, up of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. So that spurred him on, anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm not going in all the ins and outs. Very, uh, very, uh, <laughs> important bloke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, seriously. I mean, yeah. your dad bought the tapes, didn't he? Yes. And I can understand why, because he did. He did change a lot for us. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be sat here now talking like this. Why? We could have been German. <laughs> yep. He didn't let that happen. No. Um, everyone had a go at him, right? When it when it when like uh, I think it was Chamberlain who was in power, yeah. and he was like saying, "Don't be trusting that Hitler." Yeah. You know. And everyone was like, look, stop causing trouble. Chamberlain sorted it out, you know, he sorted out a peace agreement. Yeah. And he was like, uh, no, I don't trust him. And everyone was like, oh, you, you know, you're just causing trouble, you know, everyone else is happy. Then it turned out that Hitler mm. did actually do the dirty. Yeah. And try and come over. And I remember, yeah. he did, didn't he do some, he started a war or there something? There was a conflict of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. Started, started a problem. Mm. And uh, everyone went, hang on a minute, that Churchill knew what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Get him back in charge. Sure. And they got him in, and uh, Hitler was scared of him because he knew that he wasn't going to be having any lies or anything. He couldn't try it on with, with Churchill. Yeah, and especially uh, when he was a little bit pissed up and coked and with a was? big cigar. Churchill. He wasn't that. He wasn't doing that. I think. I think a lot were in the, in the during the war, in the war cabinet. I think they had to have things to keep him awake all night and stuff. And uh, yeah. he certainly liked a brandy. Rick Winston Churchill was coked up, was he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry, I just, I, this is something I wasn't aware of. If there are any historians, uh, listening, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm Was that in the sorry. world at war? No, I don't think so. Was I any, don't any, uh, any, uh, uh, historians or, uh, uh, um, you know, experts on, uh, on war, um, did, uh, did Churchill and not, not some of the, uh, the other, uh, people during, uh, I think the First and Second World War, uh, take a little bit so, of, uh, cocaine? So, uh, so when it said that, Hitler, Doctors certainly used to. Hitler liked cakes, would they be like the funny sort of cakes? No, they, he probably did like a little bit of uh, Madeira cake. Right. Yeah, that's probably nothing like Sorry, carry on. So, um, anyway. Um, he beat the Bosch. Yeah, did all oh, that. Oh, steady on, his personal life's nothing to do with it. <laughs> and the, the most amazing <laughs> bit is, right, he wasn't, he wasn't fit, and uh, he had a couple well, of strokes. Well, he's a good looking bloke in many ways. Well, well he, he had a couple of strokes, but he had a stroke on, say... See, like, we've had that. that. He beat the boss, he likes to have a couple of strokes. Yeah. Let's not get into innuendo, Carl, <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> right, say he had, like, a stroke on a Tuesday. <laughs> 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 it, 
he was he was up and fighting again on a Wednesday. Really? He was, he was a strong bloke. Yeah. And then he died at about the age of eighty six or something. Good, he's a good lad, wasn't he? He was really good. Yeah. Is so he, is he your, is he the is he the one you you favour most of all? I'd the ones say out of all, I mean Rasputin. I don't understand why he got. Like I said, I don't know why they made a book on him. No. No. He just didn't deserve it. <laughs> no. No. Che Guevara, you know, he had his he had his time, I suppose, and uh, yeah. did a bit did a bit good for certain people. Sure. Sort, yeah. Sorted Cuba out. Yeah. Doesn't really affect me. No. No. Uh, Hitler, I mean, enough said. Yeah. yeah. Bad bloke. Churchill sorted <laughs> it all out. Yeah. And like I so said, your favourite out of the four of them, the, the, the of all those four, is Churchill. Churchill, yeah. He's brilliant. Brilliant. I, I, I agree. I agree with you, I think. What I love, uh, <laughs> with, with your kind of, sort of summary of these people's incredible lives is the way that it's almost like, I remember in Looking magazine, <laughs> I don't remember Looking, it was the Junior yeah, TV Times. Looking. They used yeah. to have, um, half a page which was a comic strip, yeah. summarising someone's life. You might have, say, Five Star, the story of Five Star, yeah. and you'd have a picture. I always remember the Roger Moore one yeah. was a picture of, like, Roger's parents, it was like, Roger Moore was born in 1930, da da da. Picture of Roger's parents, Roger grew up during the war. Picture of Roger yeah. running down the street, right, yeah. this is a school kid, with a, a spitfire coming behind him like he was going to try and shoot him. Mr. Smith, surely. Exactly, uh, exactly, Mr. Smith, yeah. R Roger, uh, took up acting. Picture yeah. of Roger, like, acting. Yeah. Roger became James Bond. James Bond. Roger's now a popular, um, you know, star in his own right and there's a lot of work for charity. Brilliant. It summed up the whole thing in kind of I think they pictures. used to have that in, uh, uh, one of the TV Times or the yeah, Sunday. I, think they I, I remember sort of when it was, uh, Tina Turner, um, st uh, was it born Sarah May Bullock? Uh, then it was not Bush City Limits, stop hitting me, Ike. Yeah. And then that, and then you're simply <laughs> the best, <laughs> and that was it. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was great. That's very much what the, uh, how your summary of, of great, great events is. But I'd say on. if you didn't know about Churchill, you've learned a bit today. So I suppose so. Can any, can people call in, uh, to the, uh, the, the, well, yeah. all these, all these fellas taking that? cocaine? Uh, I think I'm right. It's 08 700 800 1234. Yeah. Give us a call, XFM 104.9. Did Winston Churchill and various other dignitaries take coke during the war? During the war, saying up for the war effort, but the emergency, uh, summits and meetings, I, I, I think it was, I, I think it's been documented. I could be wrong. And let me tell you now, it's not happening today. Wow. Pete, you're on there. <laughs> He's there, isn't he, to save me for Nancy, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, the carpool. I'm getting excited now because we've had loads of um, calls and emails, uh, uh, not only backing me up, but going a little bit further. Um, apparently, uh, uh, Johnny Mango called in again. He's, our, he's become our sort of official researcher on the, on this show. Um, the, um, there is evidence that uh, Queen Victoria in Balmora, with a young house guest, Winston Churchill, used to consume cocaine-filled lozenges. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Also, uh, MDMA was a, a precursor sort of ecstasy, a derivative, and that uh, that was big in the day, giving soldiers, you know, a little um, pick me up. So it's not so mad, is it? It sort Winston of makes Churchill sense because he was it? into his speeches and that, and they say that coke gives you sort of. <laughs> You know the balls to stand up and and say like not that that's a good thing. And no, it's not. No, definitely not. No, right. But it, apparently it gives you it gives you it makes you confident, doesn't it? So you can stand up and say you know we're going to fight them on the beaches. Yeah, and all that and and sound yeah. like you mean it. It's exactly yeah. When he was sort of like you know um, a little bit pissed up with his cigar on, coked off his tits, he wanted to fight. He didn't care where it was. He'd fight on a beach. He yeah. didn't care. He yeah. didn't care if he got sand in his new trainers. Exactly. He was boosted up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to fight? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why he was coming hard. He was very much. You got to think of him as the Liam Gallagher of his day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Are we oh. allowed to talk about this? I mean, I don't mean in terms of referencing drugs, but are we allowed to- is this like libelous to Winston Churchill? We, one, or you can't libel the dead. Yeah, but two, it's a, a Is lot that only it. in America, we're, we're, I'm asking, and I, we're, not, we're not saying, you know, to, two, I think you're prob probably going to do a fair, fair comment. Um, uh, three, we say we were joking. Yeah. Four, it's a satire. <laughs> yeah. Um, five, we love him. Five, we're not, we're not condoning drugs in any way. Six, um, this is Dermot O'Leary's show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a go at him anyway. I said he's all right. <laughs> If there's any law against Rasputin, we might be in trouble. Law <laughs> <laughs> against Rasputin. Law against Rasputin. You did willfully Rasputin. <laughs> yeah. All over you the airways. You did slag off Russia's greatest love machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't shoot him till he was dead, did you? Oh. oh, put some poison into his I'll tell you wine. this, if there's any other historical questions that people want answered, then we're the men. Because really, with, with the three of us, our knowledge of the fact that the Hindenburg was filled with helium. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> the, the kind of coke habits and various drug habits of, um, of Britain's most famous, uh, political leader. Yeah. We've got the answers to all of it. Einstein. Go on. I found out in the week that he, um, he didn't talk to Louis Six. See, it's all 
It's all these people who are weird. Churchill couldn't read, could he, till he was about eight or nine. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, there you go. He had, uh, he got a D in history, apparently, GCSE. Yeah. <laughs> Just one better. Mm. <laughs> no, but, um, Carl, uh, called me in the week and he was a little bit stressed because he's had a couple of, he's had a bad week now. He got stressed about Hitler and, and Churchill and I said, well, we're, we're, we're chill out a little bit and I'll teach him something a little bit, um, cosier. And I said, like, what about animals? No, you know, not frightening mm. other animals. You're interested in animals, aren't you? Yeah. M you know, and, um, and he went, oh, all right then, all right then. And then he went, okay, here's a question for you, Heather. So there's, there's three animals without ears. He said, and I've told you one. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, well, that's the snake, because he was talking about the snake. He went, I went, I went, hold on, Carl, there's loads of animals without ears. He went, there's not, there's three. I went, there's loads. I said, jellyfish, worms, or, um, single cell protozoa, peripherous. But he went, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Animals, proper animals. I went, they are animals. He went, no, proper animals. And I went, do you mean mammals? He went, what are you on about? I said, uh, are these animals, uh, uh, have they got legs and are they fur bearing, right? And, it, and he went, one is. They've got legs. I went, I don't know. I give up. He went, right, the turtle. I went, right, yeah. And he went, and the bumblebee. <laughs> he said, that's the one with fur. <laughs> that's the one with fur. <laughs> the well one, what are you thinking? What is in your head, Carl? Which has got the most fur, a bee or a turtle? <laughs> it's not fur. What is it? Well, well it's, it's, you know, He's done you there, it's, it's pseudo hairs, isn't it? It's like a, it's a hair, it's a keratin thing. It's not like we have like mammals grow fur. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> He's not convinced. It, it, so when on, we say that, when we say like fur, we, 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 mammals are warm-blooded creatures. Yeah. Uh, often, usually percent, or there's a few exceptions, right? That that f give their milk to their young, nurture their young, and they have fur. Have you heard about osters? O osters? Um, oysters. <laughs> um. They, that one minute they're a man, then they're a woman, then they're a man again. <laughs> like Eddie Izzard. Now that's, that's <laughs> libelous. He's a transvestite, could I say. He's not a transsexual. Let's say that straight away. I'm retracting that. Right, go on then. Give us what? some more facts. Um, no, I've got you, um, Aesop's Fables. No, but you had some more facts you told me that were dead good. I just wondered if Steve knew them. What? What do you want to know? The ones that you read out to me. You had, um, you had one about a, uh, the spiky thing. Go on. Porcupine. Give yeah. me a clue. How many spikes has a porcupine got? Don't know. How many was it? I think it was about 10,000. But I, I, these aren't these aren't the most interesting facts, are they? It's all right. <laughs> it's all right though, isn't it? Yeah. And he went, but how can they say that? You could say that, uh, uh, you know, we've got a certain amount of hairs in our head. I went 100,000 average. He went, yeah, but I haven't. So how do we know that that porcupine that they've counted is the same for all of them? <laughs> might have had alopecia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might have been a particularly hairy one. You know what I mean? Right, you've got a, 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 do you know, do you know what a fable is? I tried to explain briefly. Do you, do you know what a fable I've is? I've got Carl? a rough idea. Okay, it, it's a thing that uses sort of, uh, metaphor, analogy, just to, to, to explain sort of, uh, 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 morals. I mean, they're, they're very, they're very, very old, for a start. And it's all thing. Um, I'll give you an example of one. Um, uh, oh, a quick one. Oh, the one about the the um, the dog with two bones. Uh, he goes to a, a dog's got a bone. And he sees it reflected in the lake, and he thinks, "Oh, that dog's got a nice bone. I'll have that." And as he goes to get that one, the reflection, he drops the one he's got, and that's one about you know. I think I was, uh, I was told one when I was younger. Go on. Uh, I think it was one. <laughs> this young lad. He's got a dog, right, and he's sort of, he's about eight years old, and this dog, he's had it since he was about four, and it's a bit tired now, and he chucks sticks for it, and he doesn't, he doesn't go for it, and, uh, he's saying to his mum, oh, I want a new dog, because this one's useless, it doesn't do what, you know, it doesn't have any fun with me, so they say, oh, no, but, you know, Rover's a good little dog, you should look after it, and he's like, oh, I don't, I don't like it, I want a new one, so they buy him a new puppy. And it's it's running around, yapping about, and he's loving it, and he's playing around with it in the grass. And then uh, one day he goes to the park, and he's messing about and rolling about with it, and he falls into the lake, <laughs> right? And the little puppy's like yapping at him, and he's going, "Help me, help me!" The little, little, little dog's yapping, and then the old dog comes, and gets his collar, and it pulls him out of the lake, and he goes, "Oh God, you know why did I forget about you? You're the better dog." 
And he loved that one again rather than the puppy. I got a feeling that was Lassie. Well, <laughs> yeah, that was an episode of Lassie. <laughs> what was, what's the moral? Hooper. What's the moral there, Carl? What, what's that telling? What, what's that explaining through analogy? Sort of, don't forget the old. So <laughs> <laughs> Look after old people. <laughs> I remember there was one I heard once about a young boy who, who got trapped in a lake inside a, a, cage. a cage. But he, he, he loved his trainers so much. He loved trainers so much he wasn't going to get them wet. And but the even though he had came, to get out there. And even though he thought that was the important thing because it's material value, he actually drowned and the trainers were no good to him then. Star Sailor. Okay. <laughs> Hives, hate to say, I told you so. Now I want to uh, clear a couple of things up. Um, obviously me and Steve, we, we love Carl. This is not, this is, the things we give Carl to read and talk about, it's not to embarrass him or stress him out at all. We genuinely like his view of the world. Yep. In fact, we did an interview yesterday with a bloke from the Standard who really liked the show and said, do, do you like Carl? Because you take the piss out of him a lot. And, you know, we, we just like to say, we love Carl. I said to that bloke, I said, it's like I've got a new kitten. I can't wait to get in and see his little face on Saturdays, didn't I? Yes. And, uh, uh I think... I'm worried because I thought I'd give Carl something he was really get his teeth into with his Aesop fables. It involves animals and, you know, little stories. But I've given him a couple and he doesn't seem to be that impressed or understand the, the concept. It's just that you said you'd bring in an animal fact book as well. I can't see that anywhere. No. <laughs> well, you can only read one book at a time, can't well, you? Why didn't you bring the other one in first? Well, it's big. I've, I've got to work my way up to it sometimes. I'll probably have to get a cab because it's a bit big. Now listen, I'll give, it, I'll give this one, this is an easy one. Now just think, right, think just what it means. They're not that, they're not that hidden, they're not that cryptic. Just think what this means, okay? Okay. When the hares addressed a public meeting and claimed that all should have fair shares, the lions answered, a good speech, hairy feet, but it lacks claws and teeth such as we have. How would you use that? No. What, what do you think that means? This is this this translated from the I don't know, uh, Greek or something. I don't know. It was it was Aesop. Where's he from? Greek. Yeah. So it you know it, it should I should I do it in my own language? Okay. Um. So what what would happen if there's 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 hares and they have a meeting in the jungle with like loads of lions and go hey hold on wait a minute I think we should all be equal and share everything all right and the lions go. Well, yeah, it's easy for you to say. We've got claws and teeth. Yeah. What does that mean? He's saying, like, uh, coarser hares want that, because it's better for them. The lions get nothing out of it, because they're already king of the jungle. That's right. So it's, ne it's, ne it's negotiating from weakness. Anyone can negotiate from strength, but negotiating from weakness is your, it's, it's you know, it's, it's be lovely. It's a lovely utopian look at the animal kingdom. But the way you said it is better than the way they worded it. <laughs> well, that's uh, but that's because uh, Ricky's very much the modern Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, many people have thought that. You know, that's why he's getting a lot of awards with the TV show. <laughs> For him, Thank that's, you. that's a favourite. So look, yeah, I'll take that home and read ones you like and tell me about the ones you like. Ones that click. I don't care if you only come in with like one or two. Go, I'll tell you what, Rick, that's a mate that there's one thing that I've learned from that. You know, because sometimes you can all these phrases and until something happens, you don't, you don't think you know, you, everyone's heard, you know, to, um, I don't know, to err as human, to forgive divine. But, and then some, uh, you know, might happen, do you go, oh, that, that's what that means, that's amazing. So, you know. Do you know any, Steve, I found? <laughs> Wait, what's that? A fable. Uh, well, I would imagine that the most famous one I've always remembered is the, uh, you know, the, the lion with the, uh, the thing in its hoof. Do you remember that? Paw. The, the lion, yeah, with, the, with the, the, the spike in its paw and a smaller animal. Gets it out for it, but it still attacks it anyway. Well, that's life, isn't it? Well, I read one the other day actually, which was very interesting. It was one that uh, the famous film director Orson Welles said. Oh yeah. But she said uh, apparently there was a, a, a bear going across uh, a lake, wading through the lake, and a scorpion said, um, "Well, let me go on your back, will you? Come on, just let me go on your back. We'll go across. It'd be brilliant." And he goes, "Well, no, you'll just sting me." You go, "That would be stupid. If I sting you, you'll die, and we'll both drown." And he goes, "Oh, fair enough." Who, who was doing the stinging? The scorpion. The scorpion. Right, okay. Yeah. And the bear's wading through the water. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the scorpion jumps on the back, and they wade through the water, and halfway across, the scorpion stings the bear. And the bear goes, well, we're both gonna die now. He goes, yeah, it's my nature. I thought he was gonna say, I can swim. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, you're the best. What's, what's the one about, um... Do, does that mean anything to you? It's my nature, i.e., you know, that's in that's, my nature. That's the way it is. That's, that's what I do. Yeah. I'm a scorpion. Yeah. One of my favourite ones... These, these don't mean anything to you, do they? 
I mean, what I'm saying is you're not impressed by them. They're all right. What about this? What about this one? We are. Here's one. Here's one of my favorite. What? He said, well, why not just say, don't trust bears? <laughs> the, bear, the bear's the one that was too trustworthy. Don't trust scorpions. Yeah. Right. Here's one of my favourite ones of all time, okay? Um, uh, a lion is dying. He's an old lion. He's in the front of his cave. And all the animals come around, like the foxes and the hyenas and, and, the, and the, uh, the rabbits. And they're all taking the piss out of him. And they're laughing at him. And they're laughing and going, you can't fight us now. Can I? And just before he dies, he goes, fine, but I was a lion once. What does that mean? Don't know. Well, he's saying it's better to have lived and had what I had because I was I was great, if only for a, a short time. And you lot are still alive, but you're nothing. You're mm. you're rabbits and hares. I was a lion once, so you know. I'm are happy. they always using animals for these stories? <laughs> well, yeah, I could I could. Change it to refrigerators and household appliances if it would make it help, but animals, you know. Uh, <laughs> I remember the one about being ill a lot, and you say something about. Um, Go on. Uh, you know, mm. if you keep doing that, if you keep having time off, I won't believe you. That's the boy who cried wolf. Is yeah. that what? Yeah. Do you know yeah, that one? Have you heard the I'm famous one? Well, this is possibly the most powerful one. When you're pulling a face, <laughs> and they say, well, if you keep doing that, the wind changes. I've heard that. Like that. Yeah. 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 you know that's scientifically proven? That is. That can happen. That can happen. Should we yeah. have hip-hop hooray? Yeah. Are you queued up for that? No, but go on, you, uh... Carl, sort it out, mate. I was gonna... No, come on, this is what I asked you to play, mate. If you've not, you know, you're getting too big for your boots now with your showbiz <laughs> lifestyle. You're not yeah. paying attention, are you? You're not playing yeah. the record if you want you to play it. Heat magazine's favourite. Yeah. Okay, so, um... I've oh, you dropped that. You've embarrassed yourself. Oh, that's clumsy. Oh. You, know, you're, uh, you know, with the big I can't believe you're not in- Oh. Fables are great. He's not impressed, is he, really? No, I am. I, I mean, you know, once I get to take this book home tonight and that, and yeah. have, a, have a read, I might, I might change my mind on them next week. Yeah, you're coming all stressed. I'm, and not, I'm not impressed with the ones you've, you've been talking about, I must admit. Okay. Okay. Okay, th sure. this album is by this group Nerd, who are big uh, hip hop and R&B oh, producers so in the States. Yeah. We've played a track from them in the past, Bobby James. This album's been re-recorded, I don't know why exactly, with live instruments. You don't get many R&B and hip hop records now with live instruments, so it's pretty... It's, it's all computers, isn't it, Steve, <laughs> these <laughs> days, and drum machines. And uh, there is a forthcoming single, I suspect it might be this track, Rockstar. I'm not going to play that, I'm going to play a uh, track two, Things Are Gonna Get Better. No order, here to stay. Sadly, we're not here to stay, Steve. We've only got about ten more minutes. That's true enough. Yeah? Well, I think that's just time for some uh, interesting facts that uh, Johnny Mango, our researcher from uh, LooseControl.com, has uh, emailed us. A few uh, familiar ones, favourite ones of yours, I think. Go um, on. Any ones I don't know, though? I don't. I think you know this one, don't you? A pig's orgasm lasts for thirty minutes. I know, and uh, a pig can't actually look directly up. Wouldn't it can thought look directly after up. thirty minutes of coming. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, Daddy, be careful here. That's incredible. Remember what happened to Tom Bins? Go on. Humans and dolphins are the only species that have sex for pleasure. Uh, bonobos do as well, they've rediscovered. Really which is it? Which is a, uh. Bonobo? Uh, yeah, um, a, 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 a chimpanzee, like a chimpanzee. Right. So, yeah. So it's three now. Can't believe dolphins are getting more. They're three, they're all, they're all at it now. <laughs> dolphins get <getting> more. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, polar bears are left handed. Yeah. It's so, yeah. I yeah. don't quite know how they work that out. Did they give them spelling tests? Or uh, writing tests? Oh, yeah, they probably just do it, do it. It's probably the paw they use to hide up the, the black nose during a hunt. Of course, yeah. of course. Um, some lions mate over 50 times a day. Yeah, not, not every day of the year. Okay, they don't do that every day. No. Okay, because no. again, I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> start, I, you know, I didn't think that dolphins... What day of the year do you do it 50 times? What, <laughs> is it, it's coming up to it, it's April, isn't it, you'd like to get out there. I have a special day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could, we could coincide that with the, uh, balloon event. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just me, be me quietly humping in the corner. Volunteers, <laughs> welcome to email now, you know. Um, <laughs> and it, all, all the proceeds go to charity. If you are a desperate lioness. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, butterflies taste with their feet. I didn't know that. Interesting. I didn't know that. That is interesting. But they don't eat much, do they, because they only live a day. Good point. They wouldn't need to eat. Um, an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. That's yeah. extraordinary. That is, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the, uh... Yeah. But Carl, how big are your eyes? <laughs> Cruel. <laughs> Finally, I think we've discussed this before, haven't we? A cockroach will live nine days without its head yeah. before it starves to death. Yeah, that's only because it can't get water and food yet. Yeah, would, it would be quite happy going around doing its normal thing. Yeah. I mean, Probably if, work. if you're just as good without your head as with your head... May as well not have a head. I just... I don't see the point. Well, that was, uh, thanks to Johnny Mango there of, uh, what's his website called? Uh... It was turned into a sort of, uh, 
volunteered uh, uh, researcher. Yeah. He's very fast. Losecontrol.com. Can I just say as well, we've had lots of emails from different people just uh, saying they enjoy the show and offering little tidbits and things. Uh, Nick Wilson, Sarah and Lauren, Ken, Dan, Jane, she wanted some ash, we didn't play ash, never mind. Oh. Lee, Jez, Derry, there's loads of people there. Well, I'm gonna, uh, again, we were talking earlier about, you know, you not caring about being like a, a geek or a freak oh, or not trendy. Not. No, I'm just saying. I am trendy, I am. And I know, yeah. And, uh, I'm gonna play a bit of an easy listening. I apologise to those people who still tune in expect to, um, hear two hours of new metal or gorillas. Um, and this is, a uh, very old fashioned, lovely tune. It's bread. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, bread. Bread. <laughs> new order, here to stay on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With we're, we're here to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Over the next two hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's Steve Merchant there. Hello there. We're here with our. Producer here, Carl Pilton. We'll be talking to Carl a little bit later because um, we've got to have his thoughts on Aesop's fables, continuing the, the education of, of Carl. We've got some great music coming up. Bloody we? good music. A little bit of, uh, oh, what have we got? Like Happy Mondays. Badly Drawn Boy. Yeah, all that. Bob Dylan. All sorts. All sorts coming up. So yeah, um, Rick, I don't know, I just wanted to bring your attention to this. Uh, oh. Someone passed this on to me. It's from the uh, Guardian's media website. There's a sort of website that's dedicated to kind of media information. Is this about our complaint? Well, it, the headline is Comedian Wrapped Over Radio Innuendo. Right. Uh, Jessica Hodgson has uh, written the article. Well, are you familiar with this? Have you seen well, this? be careful now because we actually got a complaint, and a lot of people don't know this, we got a complaint upheld. And, um, well, all of this we're, is... We're, we're very sorry. We, did, we didn't mean to offend. Um, and it was a while ago, uh, so we are going to be very careful. Carl's getting very nervous. We're just going to read out. We're not going to editorialise, Carl. We're just going to read out what The Guardian printed about us, all right? Okay. Comedian Ricky Gervais has had a dressing down from a broadcasting watchdog for his repeated use of the word cock in a lunchtime radio show. <laughs> that's all right. That's what that's it says, fine, Carl. That's fine. That's what it... I he's just... Not, pro he's not going to say it again. News. He's not... Yeah, yeah. Go Imagine on. Imagine this is the news and yeah. I'm reading it. Yeah. The Broadcasting Standards Commission upheld a complaint against the comedian for coarse sexual innuendo yeah. in the programme on London Station XFM. The Commission acknowledged that the presenter's remarks were intended to be humorous, but took the view that the amount and detail of the coarse sexual innuendo had exceeded acceptable boundaries for broadcast, said the BSC, uh, BSC in a statement. The complaint objected to a section in the comics Saturday afternoon show when he discussed the different meanings of the word cock. Gervais wondered aloud whether the word was acceptable when discussing birds, but not the male sexual organ. A BSC spokesman said the comedian went on and on about it for nearly five minutes. <laughs> XFM, a self-styled alternative radio station, said in its defence that its remit was to provide cutting-edge programmes for a youth audience. The station said the programme's brief was to include elements of alternative comedy within certain shows that would not fit within a more mainstream radio station format. In this particular show, it was not the presenter's intention to shock when they took a humorous look at how the English language could be construed in different ways within different contexts. Gervais, whose big break was on Channel 4's 11 o'clock show, has shot to household <laughs> status through the portrayal of David Brent, the middle manager from hell in BBC Two's cult show, The Office. Just in case you didn't know who I was talking about. Yeah, he's a household bit. name, yeah. but they just thought... You might not have heard of him, but he is a household name. Now, um, that, that's good. That's good reporting, and they're quite right about it. And I just to remind people, it was when Steve said the only, um, uh, bird that hasn't got a penis is the swan, and I went on about the male bird being called the cock, but I couldn't use that to mean, and, you know, it was, it, it was childish, yeah. you know. But, uh, what, what annoys me is, I'm sure I've heard things on, like, Radio 1, like that. Oh, what's the, uh, the, uh, what's her name in the morning, Sarah? Uh, Cox. Yeah. And, uh, as there's a DJ, uh, like, like, Carl, um... Uh, Cox? Yeah, so you got... <laughs> Carl! What's the matter? I'm just saying. You're just saying... There, there's a pair of... DJs on, yeah, you know. Yeah, we've done this. And, uh, what are you talking about? We're just talking it's about- names. They're just saying the names. Now, I love Cox in the morning. You're a big fan- you're a big fan of Cox. Oh. And at night. What's the matter with you? Come on, Michael Carl. Carl. Alright. We've taken it, we've been- have you actually been wrapped over this? Have no. You? I don't know what <laughs> Have happened. you had a dressing day? No. When did that happen? I don't know. I, I was I, meant I... to tell you, and I never got round to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks then. So don't do it again. <laughs> Pinky Apo on XFM 104.9. <laughs> oh, can, I, can I just add that in case yes. you don't know what what you know the what frequency, frequency is? is? Yeah, exactly. Uh, why, why, why do they say that? Are they not, so, so you know what you listen to. So you go. I tell you what. I like that radio station. Yeah. And it was XFM 104.9. Exactly, exactly. I listen to that again. You listen to that. You can retune. Yeah. I was wondering actually, Rick. Stay like, locked up this end of the <laughs> dial. True enough. Um, I was wondering, because, you know, obviously we, we're still trying to campaign to get Carl into air, into the air. Yeah. Uh, with the balloon, uh, enterprise, and obviously the work's been done on that, don't fret, don't worry. A lot of people are asking for an update, but, you know, we'll obviously let you know when it's all going to take place. Yeah. But I was wondering These whether- These things take time. Exactly, but I was wondering whether we should also have another kind of campaign, some kind of campaign, maybe one that could involve you, Rick. Because oh. I'm obviously- no, I'm particularly concerned, Carl, I don't know how familiar you are with this, with Ricky's eating habits. 
mm. because he just he, so, he eats so unhealthily. No, I, it I, scares I, me. I, no, come on, Rick, don't no, give I'm me this. I'm getting better now. No, I'm you're not getting better. I have a smoothie every day. Yeah, but I've told you before that's largely sugar. No, a homemade one. I don't care, Rick. That's not enough. It can't counteract. Right, this is idea. This is Richard Dreams' <laughs> idea of healthy eating. Right, we'll be in the canteen at the BBC. He'll go. I'm going to be eat healthy today, which means he'll have two slices of pizza instead of pizza and chips. That's basically the, the, that's his theory, right? The, and it's like it's I don't know what because he can't eat anything which is kind of which doesn't is basically doesn't sting the roof of his mouth with, <laughs> with flavour. <laughs> so like for instance, he, he's always yeah. got headaches. He's always kind of got a headache. Okay, that's because you don't you just drink coffee and coke. You never drink water. Your your body is dehydrated. And I said, drink a glass of water. No, boring. <laughs> it's boring, boring. <laughs> I don't know if if we were in the desert stranded. Boring. It's boring, Steve. I'll wait till the next cafe. <laughs> Uh, right, and sometimes you'll go like, oh, we'll have a, let's have a, I'll have a salad, right? And he'll get like a feta cheese salad, right? And he'll eat the little bits of feta cheese, leave the salad. <laughs> then he goes downstairs and goes, I'm still hungry. It didn't fill me up, that salad. I go, no, what didn't fill you up was the 200 milligrams of goat cheese that you <laughs> ate. That's what didn't fill you up. Uh. So I just, this should be a campaign. I don't know whether it, I can observe it, people could sponsor him, something. Just eat healthy, we could do it for some kind Send of big charity. Fruit. I don't think the fruit's the issue, Okay, really. if you mash it, I'll, I'll eat anything Rick, I'm not mashed. saying that you don't eat a certain amount of fruit, I'm saying that everything else you eat is unbalanced and it's just rich with fat and it's awful. Yeah. It's sausages, it's beans. You're such a working class scum, aren't you? <laughs> it's the smell of chip fat, it's all around him, do you know what I mean? It's like, even when you can't smell it, you know it's there seeping through his veins. <laughs> well, I imagine when he was growing up, it was just chip fat it was. in the house, just a big, it was. Oh, constantly boiling. It always, there was always chips on with everything, exactly. yeah, or fried. Do you want Weetabix in the morning? Deep fat yeah. fry that. <laughs> <laughs> it's such scum. And now it's like, oh yeah, my palate, you know, I can't eat anything. It's got no flavour. Everything's got to have cheese on it. Sprinkling <laughs> Parmesan cheese. More Parmesan cheese. And if someone, like, doesn't give him, like, a whole tub of Parmesan cheese when you're in a restaurant, even though he's ordered, like, a lobster or whatever, he's <laughs> like, he, he sort of has a go at the waiter, or, like, not, not to their face, obviously he's too much of a coward, but he'll say to me, like, he didn't eat, you left the cheese, he said, cheat with the cheese, I don't give me any cheese. He just gave you three bucketfuls. Oh, it's a cheese, I should. It's more cheese here. <laughs> uh, it's pathetic. Oh, so I just God. think we should do something. So, because I'm panicked, I'm worried, well, you know, I'm worried I started to working out a little bit, I sort of work out twice or three times a week. I don't think week. that's going to counteract it, Rick. And I drink water through the night when I wake up and I'm dehydrated. From all the booze you've just drunk. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I have a smoothie in the morning, don't I? I don't, I, oh, you know what my views are on the smoothies, I don't think that's <laughs> counteracting. You're Andy Smoothie, you oh, are, you are Andy Smoothie. I don't think it's counteracting problem, all the mate. other You problems. have got a problem. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the smoothie. Right, oh. fine, okay, well if you, if you, if you're happy to carry on as you are. Yeah, go on. Um, Badly Drawn Boy obviously has done the soundtrack Loving of this it. new film, uh, About a Boy. Yeah. Which has got Hugh Grant in it. And obviously, uh, this current single, uh, what's it called? The, the current one that's out? The Silent Sign, that's currently, obviously that's being played on XFM. But this is another track from this album, which is the soundtrack. Lots of kind of, uh, little bits of filler, bits of musical instrumental stuff, but all of it's very nice. This is a cracking tune, track three, Something to Talk About. Lovely. Yeah, good tune that, I think. Uh, Sarah and Lauren have uh, emailed in. They said they wanted something from Elliot Smith or maybe Jimmy Webb. That's actually produced by the producer of Elliot Smith. And is that a, I haven't brought any Jimmy Webb into that. I'm no, afraid. we'll maybe play that next time. I'll play some, yeah, yeah, play some some next week. That's Badly Drawn Boy, though, from the uh, soundtrack to this film, About a Boy, and that's called uh, Something to Talk About. We've only got the stuff in the library. Do they want Four Non Blondes? Because <laughs> we've got that in the library, haven't we? The or, best of Tony Basil. And we've got um, uh, just about every song that Excess ever recorded. Exactly. We don't play enough in Excess. Do I we? don't think we do, do <laughs> we? <laughs> No, I can't believe it. Uh, um, yeah. XFM 104.9 coming up. White Van Man, White with Van Carl. White Van Carl. Uh, I was uh, obviously out with Carl last night. A lot oh of people yeah. Don't realize this because we went out. There's uh, what's the name of that evening? Marketplace Extracurricular. Extracurricular. Yeah, various uh, XFM DJs go down there and just play an eclectic mix. Just spin some tunes off. Absolutely. I'm thinking of doing it in a couple of weeks, Rick. And obviously, you know, my turntablist skills now are, uh, are yeah. pretty. Yeah, something yeah. to behold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I tell you this, what I did an amazing mix the other day with my friend Dan. We did. Yeah. We spent two and a half hours on it. This is how we spend our evenings now. Two and a half hours mixing from a trip hop sort of art, you know, hip hop style beat into uh, Arthur's theme by Christopher Cross. Great. When tune. you get caught between the moon and New Written York City. Written by four people. Four people. Backrack, yeah. Carol Bayasaga, Christopher Cross, and a fourth one. Absolutely. Phone in if you know that. Maybe we should. But um, who, who knows the fourth person credited on that tune? If you were a prize, seven hundred, eight hundred. One, two, three, four. Also, I want another, someone else to phone in. Right? I saw I saw an advert, right? There's a, those advert of toys. I think it must be, is it because it's uh, Easter holidays or something? Right. And I was watching today, and there's uh, one of those transformer type things, and it goes, and it's shield. It strikes and then goes into its shield, <laughs> and it goes into a little pod. And I'm sure it was called a bowlock. <laughs> right. Now, I, I must have misheard it. There's no way you can call a little kid's toy a bowlock. 
So, can you phone in? I'm, I'm quite willing to be wrong. It'd be very disappointing. But, you know, are people making little bollocks for kids? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. 700, 800, 1234. And what was the other question? Was there, uh, the other question was who uh, was, was the fourth, fourth person, person that wrote, wrote uh, Arthur's theme? Yeah. When you get caught between the noon and New York City. It's uh, crazy, but it's true. true. Yeah. The only thing you can do is fall in love, Carl. But was that with Carl last night? Obviously, party animal. You know, he's hanging out with some of my friends. You enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Carl? It's all right. But uh, you were a bit worried about uh, Jennifer Lopez, weren't you? Yeah. What was the concern? Um, I don't really know what's going on in the pop world. Um, you you're joking? No. Go on. And um, I was there in the toilets, right? And I heard it playing out on the speaker, and I heard the DJ go, uh, "There you go. That's." Uh, Left Eye Lopez there. That's not... And I thought, it's Jennifer Lopez. No, it's the I little one. Uh, she had some sort of eye injury. <laughs> <laughs> that was you thought he was breaking the news of yeah. Jennifer Lopez losing an eye by calling her Left Eye Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. That's genius. Don't worry, we put him to... We put, we put him right, it's okay. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah. But you were worried for a while, weren't you? You were anxious for a while. I, I, I had no idea. And the thing is, I heard that on, like, Thursday, so for, like, three days I've been thinking... You've been panicking. ...why she called that. Because she changed her name before, hasn't she? She said J-Lo or something. Yeah. So I thought, you know... Yeah. Has she got some people after her? Does she owe someone money? <laughs> Keep changing yeah. her name. That was Wobby Gabrielle <laughs> and Rise. <laughs> 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 anyway, more music, we? Oh, I'd love to. So yeah, what, what have you got? What have you got lined up there, Carl? Beat a band. Oh yeah, 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 sweet, 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 sure, sure, sure. Respect, yeah, 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 total respect, yeah, 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 yeah,
I was looking at him and she said, she said to her friend, <laughs> he looks a bit like tennis player Boris Becker. I thought, well, you, you, you should be so lucky. Frankly, because I saw him, he had awful facial hair, if that's what makes him look like Boris Becker. Terrible little goatee beard, it was laughable. <laughs> I thought, you, I don't know. And then she uh, goes, she goes to the thing and she's like, yeah, I met him, we got chatting and stuff, you know. And I was, and she was going, it's not often that, um, it's not often that you meet someone, you know, generally in life, who's, you know, kind of thoughtful and intelligent and funny. I thought to myself, I'm not even gonna waste my time with you, love. <laughs> frankly, if that's what you thought of him. You just walked yeah. away. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even bother talking to her. No, you were just I didn't above even waste it. my time with if her. If she really. thinks that bloke is not if only she great looking, it was funny, but great funny looking. and intelligent, and she got on well, and he was polite, and it was a chance meeting, and he thought, and she, and she thought that you were like a freaky looking dork who didn't exactly. even have the nerve to if speak. That is what if that's she what she thinks, thinks then well, she's I thought, don't want to know it. I, I couldn't. Uh, you walked away, and good luck to you. And I have my dignity in Yes, and she's nothing. <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9. Well, coming to that time where we do White Van Man. Absolutely, with uh, producer Carl. And uh, Carl's gonna also going to be uh, telling us uh, his, uh, his slant on fables on Aesop. Absolutely. Um, I was out with Carl. I know I shouldn't be. Yeah, well, I, I broke the rule as well. I know. Time. Well, I was out with him the night before, I think. And uh, we were just chatting. And um, as you know, uh, we're, uh, we're going to Edinburgh uh, for a week. Um, yeah, that's all three of us. That's all three of us, yeah. It wasn't, um, I just wondered for a minute if there was some arrangement you two had made. Like next no. weekend, just popping out there seeing the sights. <laughs> yeah. No, we're gonna do a, a week's broadcasting from the Edinburgh Festival. And, uh, you know, and Carl's going, I bet you lie in, don't you, and all this. And I was going, well, yeah, he's going, well, he wants to be up at half nine and out looking at the sights, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and I said, uh, have you ever had haggis? And he went, it's black pudding in it. I went, no, it's, uh, it's mints. He went, I like mints. I went, yeah, but wait, it's mints in a sheep stomach, right? And he went, what, they force feed a sheep, then kill it? <laughs> Imagine that, Carl. It makes sense, though, doesn't it? No, it doesn't make sense. Well, they force feed a sheep mints, and then kill it, till its stomach's nice and full, and they go, oh, this one's full, kill it, before it starts digesting it. Of course they don't. It's a membrane, they've... And the other one, he was talking about, like, um, he likes Richmond Park, he goes, I like to see all the deers. I went, it's deers, plural, you don't need to say. Deers. I try and educate whenever I can. What's that one? I said, the deer is already plural. Yeah, deer is yeah. I said, you know, like sheep or, or fish, so you can say fishes. And, uh, and, uh, we were I said, um, do you know the, um, plural of, uh, mongoose? Because a lot of people would think it would be mongoose. It's not, it's mongooses. Do you know what Carl said? Plural of mongoose. Mongoose, yes. Plural of it's, mongoose? It's worth a competition. No, it's not, no. No, go on. Carl, what did you think the plural of mongoose was? Mongs. <laughs> <laughs> play a record after this white van, man. Do you want to play, uh... Oh, let's play a bit of Dylan, yeah. Um, this is, this is a, a, a beautiful track. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Just Like a Woman. <laughs> well, I think that's a beautiful record. Uh, it's by Bob Dylan, and it's Just Like a Woman. And... Carl went... He's got his headphones on, so he's speaking a bit loud. The harmonica's in, playing. In, in a, in a whiny, mank accent, when the harmonica's going, That's annoying sound, Matt, isn't it? <laughs> God. Oh, bless Bob him. Dylan there. An annoying sound there. Did you hear about- The annoying sound of Bob Dylan, like <laughs> a new yeah. album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just that sort of sound always reminds me of, um, a one-man band. Yeah. Have you heard the story about Leo Sayer with his song, One Man Band? No. Years ago, wh what year was, um, oh, God. Have you moved for dancing? Uh, What's the song that he did about a one-man band? I'm a one-man band, it was called. Right, yeah. Funnily enough. Yeah, Go on. he did that, one-man band, and he was playing it at the Dominion Theatre. Yeah. And apparently, whenever he played, he, he sort of sang this song, he got the audience involved, and the line in it was, a man, one-man band. One Nobody man. knows or understands. Is there anybody there can lend me a hand right. to my one-man band? He said that, and what he used to do, he used to reach out. Oh, and, yeah. And grab people's hands, and then he'd walk down the middle. <laughs> anyway, he said, won't anyone lend me a hand? And he stuck his hand out grabbed like a hand and was walking down, Every lo everyone looked horrified, and some woman who had like a plastic hand, it had come off. <laughs> and he was walking down the middle of like Dominion Theatre with his plastic hand in his hand. <laughs> and he said, oh, it's a moment I won't forget. <laughs> he knows how to tell a story, Leo Sayer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well it's time oh. for White Van Man, which is where we ask Carl the questions that the son asks someone else. Exactly. It's um, an article in there where they ask some, you know, typical man on the street, the, uh, the big questions of the day, uh, gives them their platform. 
to the nation, and we think this is just too good to let out because we, I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the, in the, in the country now. That's true enough, he's the K-man and there he is. There he is, right. Carl, your thoughts please on Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No, She, uh, she got booed at her, uh, premiere of her, her new film, Britney, because she, uh, she'd left her fans waiting for like an hour. Some of them had travelled up from Bristol, other parts 3, of the country. Three thousand of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just was, went straight into the theatre an hour late, just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even bother to shake their hands, sign any autographs. Off. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was like, say, outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um, so she did wave, like. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? No, I don't think it was. Uh. He's like a defence lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but who hasn't really read the brief. <laughs> exactly. so no, like he's just winging it. Judge, so first judge, was it raining? No? <laughs> oh, shit, I was, I was relying on that. Uh, wasn't <laughs> raining. Um, was she hmm. running late for the start of the film? Yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, the people are inside, they're not gonna start the film without her, it's Britney Spears. Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when, uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise, he's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but... He's a smaller what, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what <laughs> do people want from people, do you know what I mean? Yeah, good An point. autograph, things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve, is there okay. another one? Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, 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 yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, <laughs> isn't there? Next. Go on. Uh, what do you make of, uh, a New York's- a New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City, he's come over, he said, you're going all over the place here, mm. you need more bobbies on the beat, more policemen, more a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about, um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench, mm. uh, and he was asleep or something. Oh, yeah. And people were, like, outraged because, like, he, he should be looking after, you know, England's people, not nodding off on a, on a park bench. Which is a bit daft because- They <laughs> were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, no, should be that? looking so after England's was this people? The, was this the 16th century you went back to? <laughs> what do you think? He should, he should be looking after England's people. You know, wherever he was, if he was in right. like a park somewhere, yeah. they, were, like, they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure. He was probably undercover. If it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there was any sort of- if someone needed help, mm. and he screamed, he would have woke up, so I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah. And, and he know. might not, he might not have been there at all, so, you know, it was, you know, so, yeah. he'd probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah. Listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not, that the, the crime's going up? I think up there's and... enough, I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay. You're, you're happy then? Yeah. As long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount, just the right amount of crime? Yeah. yeah. What about the fact that, uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? A little bit, when I, when I go on holiday, like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah. There's a good one called The Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, no. Can't do see I. it happening. No. You been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs a needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling, generally? You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about? Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If, if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not gonna make any difference. Okay. No. Okay, it's <laughs> really good. Uh, what do you make of the So Solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously not a very good example to, uh, his young fans. He should've got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. Um, about, about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that- Were they all there? Cause there's yeah, a lot of them. I, c I couldn't remember all their faces. <laughs> the um, feature in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. <laughs> he had etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Two of them had etc, yeah. I had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on? Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, so solid poo. And I was walking down the street and they came towards me. Wow. That's a great dream. That's amazing. That's an amazing that's an amazing I love dream. that. That's, we've all had- 30 year old. We've all had that anxiety dream. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what oh if no. I meet the So Solid crew and I'm oh wearing no. a t-shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it, yeah, you know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the I, It was one of them where I woke up. Do you know I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling? Oh yeah. yeah. It was the same sort of thing. It's you like, know I'm not a real psychiatrist, don't you? You should, you know no, what I mean? You, you do know a lot about a lot. 
Yeah, I do, thanks very much. And, you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think, right, I'll ask Ricky that one yeah. soon. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. But you know that, th I think you might mention before that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah, yeah, well that's it, if you don't- But uh, apparently if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew <laughs> in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you probably a lot, a lot of people have been joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> so yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. okay. Finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win oh. the Best Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Oh, got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it's good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit. And, you know, I've, I've been in that same sort of position. What? <laughs> Clayton <laughs> Oscar? <laughs> well, I got, um, it, what they used to do at school is, uh, <laughs> okay. if you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. <laughs> okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. Sure. And I went up, and I didn't, I didn't do it, make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> Can't play a record, mate. Well done, though. Great Were well you done. the first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. To <laughs> it was <laughs> just for you. <laughs> you. They mounted an entire yeah. ceremony the just to encourage you. <laughs> Wise words there from Bella Sebastian <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Rick Gervais. With me, Steve Matchin. Nice, Steve. Well, I mean, it is indeed wise words, Rick. I'm worried that people are going to get out of the office now and into the sunshine and not be listening to the show. There's always the transistor radio. <laughs> That's true enough. Um, you think you're going to the park. Take well, it along. It is time. Keep it low, though. Don't want to irritate other people. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if, if you do want to irritate them, spit on them. It's better. <laughs> exactly. Um, and kick them and throw little rocks. <laughs> exactly. With me, Carl, Kamer and Pilkington, we are now... We're into this, way, way into the second month of the education of Carl. As you know, Carl got one GCSE in history, and he, and, uh, we've been, uh, we've been cramming, haven't we? Oh, and, Rick, uh, before you mention that, can I on. just say something? Um, obviously we do, always do this thing with the sun, uh, White Van Man, where we read this thing out from the sun and query, uh, Carl. And, uh, we met with some friends last night, and my friend Dan always listens to the show, and he said, um, Carl, you, you know, you, I love the bit when you, you answer the questions in the, in the sun. Why, do you have, do you ever know what the questions are before they're asked, or is that your first answer? And, uh, Carl said, no, that is it. They don't let me see what the questions are first. They don't show them to me, and I always get, re always get really anxious and really get really paranoid. And I was just wondering, have you seen the error there, Carl? Have you seen the mistake you've been making? Right? What you're worried you that, that you're worried that you didn't get the questions beforehand, right? Well, how could you? How, how could, could you, you maybe combat that? Do you think? How, how could you combat that if you're really nervous? Uh, you know, coming maybe you wanted to sort of have some views or ideas well, beforehand. It's 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 your error, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's your show. If uh, if you want to like take a chance with me. No, 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 no. So no it's point is this: that if you're really worried about it, how could you how could you get hold of those questions in advance? Is there any way you could get hold of those questions in advance? Yeah, but is it always in? In today's? <laughs> is that always in Saturdays? Yes. So they don't do that every day of the week? They do, but I always take it from this Saturdays. Right, well, yeah, I could, but that would cost me money. I'm not on enough as it is sure. working here on Saturday. <laughs> okay. How much is the sun? 30p. Yeah, well. <laughs> You're not made of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, um, it's 40p on a Saturday. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, you were studying Aesop's fables, weren't you, this week? Now, mm. now I, I'm, I'm going to very, be very liberal here. And let you talk about. It. I'm not. It's not. I'm not a test. I'm not. Hey, man, just like chill out. I'm not this like rigid, sort of uh, you know, uh, boxing society. Just, just tell us your views. Just tell us your vibe on Aesop. Tell us something. What have you learnt from these fables? He uh, made a bit of money out of something that's quite simple. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if he did make any money out of it. I mean, it, it, you know, I think it was published like thousands of years after his death. But go on. Yeah, they're just just little stories. I mean, uh, enjoyed them. Yeah. Didn't learn anything from him. Okay. Or did or did you, you see? Because it's teaching through sort of like metaphor and analogy and maybe it, it all seeps in and it's all subliminal and maybe in a way your, no, your subconscious is teaching you. No, it's silly, Rick. It is silly. If the stories were done in like a real way, that there's like a, a man and a woman and, and it's a little story that may happen to them in life, then you learn something. But it's all about, you know, a gorilla and a fox uh, are walking through the woods. How often does that happen? <laughs> Sure. So you're saying if it was more like if kind of if it was more true to life, if it was more like maybe if it was more like real yeah. stories, like you know a kid on his grifter and a, a magpie picking it, you know pecking at his head, or yeah. two frog boys <laughs> with webbed hands. I mean, if it was real stories from real life that people could believe, yeah, what actually happened. Maybe you know it, it would teach us something. But why not do that? Like take a real situation, say like the So Solid crew guy, yes, going down for carrying a gun. Use that in some way. Do you know what I mean? As a warning maybe about carrying guns? What about something yeah. like, I if you carry guns and that is illegal, do you, you could have some sort of punishment? 
Yeah, that's not good. So, yeah. so yeah. it doesn't yeah. bother you then that the fact that these fables have been used for many, many generations to educate maybe young children or even older people, the fact that they've served a brilliant function and they've become classics, that doesn't bother you? You've seen through them? Well, they don't always work. Okay. Uh, when I was out with Rick the other day, he brought one up. I told him the one about the, uh, the, the, the two mice, the industrious mouse who, um, throughout the summer, he would be storing berries, nuts and berries, and he'd be storing it, and the other ones would just be eating off the trees and running around and having a laugh, and they go, well, you're gonna become hungry, and they go, oh, I'll worry about that when it comes to it, and they'd do that, and he'd be storing his nuts and berries, and the autumn came, and the mouse was still playing and not doing anything, and then winter came, and the, and the silly mouse was, like, shivering, and he went and knocked on the, the mouse's door, and went, I'm freezing and I'm starving, and the, and the clever mouse said, well, I told you, didn't I? You know, you should have been storing your nuts through winter like I did, come in and share mine. You know. And, uh, what did you say, Carl? Well, and the moral of that is whatever. Well, uh, 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 yeah, you know, sort of, uh, you know, just be careful. Uh, but my thing is that, that it's not very good, because the moral of that is do what you want, and there's always a, a, a do-good or a chair there, yeah, so... Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. But, um, but the way I, w you know, I think, which is more sort of 2002, <laughs> the ending should have been, uh, you know, the guy with all the berries <laughs> should have, like, been like, yeah, no, I'll be all right come the winter. I've got loads of food, I'll be safe. But then, as he's going into his little hut, at the beginning of the winter, some sort of bus or something comes and kills him. Right. And it's like... You should have parted hard, cos yeah, you might die. Yeah. Enjoy life whilst you've got it. Yeah. Okay, and if winter comes, just starve to death. <laughs> well, you know, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm wondering favorite. if there's a new book here. I really am worried <laughs> wondering like, if there's uh, a Carl's so like, Fables. He's, he's been coming out with the sum all week. He keeps going, well, that's a fable, isn't it? Yeah. So what's your favourite fable in there? Have you learned anything from this book? Uh, to get, you know, is there one fable you liked? Yeah, I mean, they're, you all, like? they're all all right. What did you like? Uh, you've thrown it on me now, there. Didn't you like one about a crab, you said? No, that was the one about messing about on a cliff edge or something. Don't what? mess about on a cliff edge. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I, well, there's not many around here, so I didn't take much interest in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? God. Um, I'm doing my best here. I'm you don't remember yeah, any of Here's one, yeah, on. here's one that was quite nice. Uh, there was a belly, you know, like your stomach. Yeah. And, uh, and it's this belly on a pair of legs. And the legs were saying, I'm more important than you because I, I carry, I carry you around. And the belly said, yeah, but, you know, if it weren't for me, holding all this food, you wouldn't have the energy to walk around. Yeah. And that means, like, you know, rather than working on your own, it's best to work in a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Good. Well, the one, the one similar to that that I was taught when I was little was, um, um, a vision of, uh, heaven and hell. And, uh, in, it went down to hell, and in hell, right, there was these, you know, people had, like, 20 foot long, um, chopsticks. Yeah. And they they were getting their food, and they would they couldn't get the chopsticks into the food and get it round their mouth because they were just too long. Right. right, and that was how. And in heaven, they had exactly the same thing, but they were feeding each other. What? Right. You don't like Chinese food? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're concerned is, Carl? No, I'm just. My, see, my, the one I remember, I, I can't remember the ending, it's uh, about two nuns in a bath. Yeah, oh, I know. I can't yeah. remember what it is. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Or is it, are they on a bike? <laughs> they're, 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 that's two adventures, it's the same nuns, <laughs> but the they go to all sorts of adventures. They, they're they, they, quite they, erotic adventures. Yeah, well, they are, there's well, one where they're driving down a cobbled street, I remember. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God. And God. then there's the other, then of course they get... Whale Bones, on XFM 104.9. I'm Richard Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Hello, and Carl. Well, um, Carl, I, I really don't think you got your teeth into the fables, really. I don't think you... Uh... There wasn't anything to learn. I read a couple, thought, yeah, that's all right, and put it down again. There wasn't anything to learn. It was all stuff I knew already, <laughs> but made up with nice little foxes and bears and stuff, so... Yeah. But is that, that one about, like, that one we spoke about, like, uh, when the hares are going, we should share all our food, and the lion said, that's a good argument, but you haven't got, it hasn't got the teeth and claws that we've got. That's lovely, because it's sort of like, you know, that's an in indictment on, mm. sort of, you know, you could say it's an anti-equality almost, you know, you could get really sort of deep into that, you, you know what I mean? You could, no? Big oh, philosophical I'm, ideas in a nutshell, not interesting? No, not really. Um, okay. Okay, then, well, th you're going to hate this, then. I've brought in the concise Oxford Dictionary of Quotations. Now, just look at some of your favourites. I suggest going to straight to things like, um, Wilde, or, uh, Newton, or Churchill, 
or um, you're a big Keith fan of Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, yeah like oh well, he's 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 the boy. Yeah, right, okay. Let's uh, go through that old Kramer. Blah, blah. Newton, right? Um, right. Here's a famous one. Okay, this is Isaac Newton. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Do you like that one? So there's a meaning in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he hasn't actually stood on the shoulders of giants. So he's. So remember, he's a he's a, an amazing. Uh, uh, inventor and mathematician, and he discovered the incredible uh, laws of the universe. And and he's saying, yeah, if okay. You, if you want a good view, <laughs> move into a multi-story. <laughs> he's saying, right? He's saying, if I've seen, if I have seen further than the people, and he's being modest here, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants to get that view. If it weren't for all the people that have come before him with their great insight and knowledge, he wouldn't have seen what he's seen. He's ta taken his learning, isn't it? Those people have. Well, I'll just say that. Instead of making up, it's, that, that's what I've got a problem with. People don't <laughs> poetry, say what they mean. Poetry, art, and in yeah. life though, people never say what they actually mean, and you know, there's loads of books on it. I don't know. But but the point hey. is that he's he's just summarised quite a tricky idea, beautifully. It's in beautiful. Sentence. That 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 that's that that gets into you much deeper than just the words, than just the literal. Words, you know what I mean? One it, of my it, favourites is from an American novelist, and the quote is, talking about the subject of fame and being famous, yeah. fame is a mask that eats into the face. Don't you think that's amazing? Meaning? Well, meaning that the fame, that fame is something that is artificial, that you wear initially, you become famous, but it's, it's, it's ethereal, it's nothing, it's intangible, it's just an artifice. But if you stay famous long enough, you begin to think that that mask you're wearing is really your real face. So that you begin to, you know, think that you are more than, than you perhaps are. Do you see what I mean? In the way that fame and power can corrupt. I know who said that. No, it's an American novelist, I forget his name. Yeah, it's alright. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. What's, what, <laughs> okay. what, what, uh, pick another one, right? Yeah, let's have a look. Um, oh, Bernard Shaw, he's no slouch. I let's think maybe when you read, when you take this book of quotations home, Carl, you should maybe just draw up maybe a list of three or four of your favourites yeah, like, and, and tell Shaw, them next week. I want you Shaw, um, Wild, uh, I look at Shakespeare as well, you know, he's... Uh, yeah. what, you, are you a fan of Shakespeare? No. Go on, what's your, what's your problem with it? Just um, the way they speak, can't, sure. I can't follow it. Yeah, yeah. Do you like West Side again, Story? It's, it's really old as well. I can't relate to it. It's, it's like years and years ago, isn't it? That's why I like Churchill, because nineteen forties. Yeah. Not long look ago. at this. Look at this. This is uh, sure. Okay. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Uh, again, uh, how would you see that? In your little... Well, that's your, that's one homework then. I'll mark that. That's your homework. You've got to work that out. You've got to tell me what you think of it. S say again. Don't ask Suzanne. It's there. All right, all right. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Okay? Take that home with you. And we'll be um, hearing Carl come up with some amazing quotations next week. Yeah, pick out your favourites. Now I'd like to uh, play a song for the lovers while he's thinking. No, I don't think we've got the lovers lined up. Oh, uh, what have we got? A bit of hip-hop. It's hip-hop hooray. Oh, is it? Yeah, everyone's a big fan. Uh, I played something from this last week. It's uh, this new album from Nerd, In Search Of. It's been uh, re-recorded by the lads, I don't know why. <laughs> and um, anyway, it's particularly good. We played last week, Things Are Getting Better. This is the one we have played in the past, actually. Bobby James. Doves. There goes the fear on XFM 104.9. Well, just read that book anyway. I just, I just, can I just say, uh, th this is one of a, a beautiful, is Keats, right? Um, what do you think of this? A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. See, this, this is just like how it was at school now. I've, I've, the last couple of weeks have been quite interested in what you've been giving me. Now it's, it's really like, okay. I really don't care. Now this, th what about this? Now no, I, 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 I did philosophy, and philosophy is obviously the, you know, the quest for knowledge, and it's, you know, it's a, look, listen to this though, this is what Keats came out with. Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Don't be constrained by what's, you know, dream a little, you know what I mean? Just go beyond. I don't agree with it, but it's a lovely, it's a lovely bit of poetry. Yes. Yeah? So you're gonna read that for me, are you, Carl? Yeah? yeah. Just pick out five of your favourites. Yeah. The ones that mean something to you. And then ne next week I'll bring you in pictures of animals. Brilliant. Okay? Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, and some sweets. <laughs> Rick, um, I've had a word with some of the, uh, the top brass here. Well, they had a word with me in the corridor. If you remember Did when they we started- Did they say, what, who are you? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, four eyes. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, no, they said they were saying that, you know, obviously enjoy the show, they love it. And, um, 
they're just worried though that in the early days when we started the show, remember we were a lot more informative. We used to do the film reviews, yeah, there was things like the gig guide and stuff sure, like sure, that, sure, sure. which we've kind of let yeah, go by the, the, the way side. Yeah, so, they want us to bring it that. Well, no. exactly. So I just no, 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 the gig guide. I was worried that, funnily enough, the XFM gig guide, uh, gig guide does not include some of the biggest bands in the world, okay, all right. or, or some of the best venues. That's what worried me. Don't, look, Rick, but just do what you're told. Right, oh, there's, is it the gig, is there's it got, the gig guide. It's is got it got big, better? It's got so a lot of big names. Am I going to be You're going to love the gig guide. I need week. a bet. If this is going to be pretty well, impressive, let's, do the, let's play the proper jingle. Okay. Okay. Ah, tonight, uh, if you wanna- oh, hey, if you wanna see these two bands in a small venue, get down to the Metro Bar on Oxford Street. Doors are at 8pm and tickets are only six quid to see Ten Benson and Beach Buggy. Ah, ah, All right? Now, if you missed Longwave, supporting the Strokes of Brixton Academy last night, you can catch them headlining Casino Royale at the Monarch. Rick, I missed them last night, how much will I be paying for that? You'll only be paying five pounds, right? But listen, they're also supported by Shelby and I Remember Nothing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, now, people know about the Rixon Academy, but a little-known, uh, venue in Rixon is the Windmill. <laughs> okay. And you're, you're gonna see three great bands there tonight. Guapo, <laughs> okay. Plonkez, and Mechanical Beatles Never Quite Warm. <laughs> so, uh, Orange Goblin and Grand Magus play the garage, and, uh, well, it, the Diffin, what's it, Diefenbach and Sudden play the Rotar Sessions at Nine Hills Arts Club. So that's the gig guy, <laughs> Lex <laughs> What a load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, st switch off the jingle. Look at this. <laughs> We've discussed this before, haven't we? Names for bands that will never be anything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mechanical Beatles, Never Quite Warm. <laughs> <laughs> please welcome to oh. the stage Plankwev. <laughs> please welcome oh. to the stage Orange Goblin. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Look oh, at it. Oh, God. Orange Goblin. Uh, Orange Goblin. <laughs> so what's rubbish. His, what's his name? Uh, um, got a fake town, hasn't he? That one of his mar com uh, supermarket suite. What's his name? Dale. Dale Winston. Dale Winston, yeah. Supporting R.E.M. I remember nothing. <laughs> Never gonna happen. <laughs> Just, I mean, please. Come on, people. Think. Hey, here's a band that plays big venues. Doesn't make them better, sure. But this is Radiohead, this is, uh, Song for the Lovers, and Let Down, off OK Computer. This is beautiful. So, see, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Th doesn't that move you at all, Carl? Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. <laughs> there was an old lady from Ealing <laughs> who was putting... Radiohead, Let Down, off OK Computer. Apparently we missed, uh, we missed a gig on that gig guide. Uh, Drip Feed are playing the Rock Garden on the 21st of this month. Excellent. So, uh, the lead singer just called in cool. with that. He also, uh, left a quote with me, uh, apparently, uh, uh, Coleridge said of Keats, wasn't it? He's, uh, like an archangel slightly damaged. Rick, See, I'm worried we're getting a little bit highbrow. Do you reckon? Have you got any knob gags you could do, quickly? Because I'm just thinking we're switching, there's a lot of people that are going to be turning off. Um, I uh, mean, currently, currently on Capital FM, Chris Tarrant, and Dr. Neil Fox, together at last. The at last, we've always they wanted. said it would never happen. Do you know what I'd like to see together? Uh, that breakfast DJ, Sarah... Cox. And who's the, the, uh, dance, just, um, Carl... Carl, uh, be Carl Cox. <laughs> Carl, please, why are you getting, you're suddenly saying these rude words? You've been reprimanded yeah, once, don't Carl, don't say please. that, and don't say it so aggressively, because it sounds like you're saying Cox, aggressively. Come on, we've been reprimanded. Yeah. Why? That, just don't use language like that. It's annoying on. me. Come on. Why is it annoying you? Because We're talking about DJs, that's yeah. their names. You, you try to be clever. I, I hardly think that's me, clever. You've given me a <laughs> Yeah, if that's my best attempt at being clever. I've got rubbish homework this week. Okay, he's really upset he's about really this. Upset. He was looking forward to st uh, an uh, animal fat. You said you were going to bring in that big book, five hundred. It's animal so. Fat. It, I got it off one of those bargain books. Oh, I thought it'd be easy, right? Because it's it's but it's too elementary. No, but that's more useful than that to me. But it's things like it's things like the tortoise has a shell to protect it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, but you know, because you thought it was there just to be painted on the tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you ever, have you ever peeled a tortoise? They fly, they go about 400 miles an hour. It's to weigh them down because they're the fastest lizards known to man. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, they run so fast they can go through walls. Yeah. And so they're, 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 they're shells put on them in the hospital, in the maternity ward, at a very early age, just slow them down. You let a tortoise out uh, a shell and you won't catch it. Steve, do you know that turtles can breathe out of the bum? Turtles can breathe out of their bum? I know someone who can talk out of it, but <laughs> see if knows that. <laughs> That's, uh, that you, well, tell us about that. Tell us about that. Then. How do they do that? It, that's all I know. They get, when they go swimming, they can sort of, uh, <laughs> if they don't want to get their, stick their head out, they can just... <laughs> stick their arse out. Yeah. 
<laughs> why, why don't they want to stick their head out? I don't know. Just uh, if, I, I don't know, maybe they don't need, they need to be looking for food under the water. Yeah. So, and if they stick their head up to get some air, they might miss something. Wouldn't it be easier to have an arse that could, um, forage for food? So they could sort of like lounge in the pool like a jacuzzi and they're looking around going, all right, hello, <laughs> hiya, and meanwhile it's arse, it's like munching grass. Yeah, bad Wouldn't breath. that be easier? Bad, bad breath. <laughs> 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 well, I wish I understood what that meant. Um, yeah. In all this hilarity- It's quote, is it? But in all that hi hi this hilarity, I'm worried we've um, forgotten the true meaning of Easter. <laughs> no, come on, Rick, come on, come on, you're just, you know, you're being frothy and lightweight and a little bit rude, but you yeah. know, it is, it's a time for remembering. And chocolate. That, um, someone did die for their ass sins. Yeah. So, can we just- Be ashamed to disappoint him. Yeah, can we just think about that and just take a moment just to consider that? Yeah, can we do that? All right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah? You understand the true meaning of Easter, it's not just about eggs and bunnies, you no, understand no, it, no. don't you? Yeah. What's your memory of it? What's your understanding of it, Carl? Did, what Easter, you, what's it all about for you? What did you have to do at school? Did you have to do anything at school? Uh, I think we got a long weekend off. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> yeah. What did they call that weekend? Easter weekend. Brilliant. Okay. okay, and what was the reason for that? What, why did we have Easter weekend off? Jesus. Yeah, but what did he do? He, uh, he put himself on the cross. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well, he didn't put himself on no. the cross. Does it mean anything to you? Are you moved by that story? Again, too long ago for me to sort of- <laughs> Okay. Um, you know- To worry about. To it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if there'd have been an Anderson shouter involved- Yeah. You'd have been- you'd have been there, wouldn't you? You're not well today, are you, Carl? Not at all. Don't know no. what's wrong with me today. I've, I've got a bit of a temperature. Have you? Do you know Steve, uh, like, you know, he's always on the go at me. Last night when we were out with his mates- Yeah. They said he was a bit of a hypochondriac to himself. Did they? Yeah. What did they say? What were they saying? He said, uh, they said, I said, Steve's told me he's not feeling well. Is, you know, is he all right? You live with him? He said, oh, I don't worry about that. Really? So he's always saying that and I said, that's a bit of a fable. I said, cry wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One day he say, I've got a temperature and they go, oh, I've had the lemsip and he'll die. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've learnt my lesson. Yeah. Th there was one about cry, the boy cried wolf. It, the, uh, <sighs> The moral can surely only be never tell the same lie twice. You know what I mean? Because if he'd have like come up with a different one, he'd have kept them going all year, I reckon. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. I never thought of it like that before. What are we gonna play? A final tune. Have we got, what we got we got we got a bit of swayed, haven't we? Well, it depends. Let's get a bit of swayed in and song for the ladies. Let's go over. You can't What's the, so what is the ladies it's is very the football. Short. It's only the football. You can't, don't say that. Yeah, I'll give us your song. What's the football? What's the match? What's this? A lot of, uh, the gig guide oh. is Long Wave and Guapo and Plankers. What's this? What's the football match? Oh. What are the football matches XFM covering? I don't know. What, what Come song on. would you like? Tra track, track eight. The Bolton versus Barnsley. <laughs> you don't like sport though, do you? A lot well, of people who do. Huh? A lot of people who do. Alright, track eight, what are we going for then? Uh, we're going for, uh, it's a bit of Stevie Wonder. Yeah? And, uh, I think it's quite a short song though, Carl. Are you gonna- are you sure? No, that's cool, yes. Yeah, it's cool. okay. You're okay, are you? Yeah, yeah. So this is the final song, is This it? lost a lot of energy, this show. This is it. I think the first hour and forty minutes I think was dynamite. I think the last ten have been, uh, but flagging. But I think Carl, he was- he was full of life, you know, he was answering the questions and stuff and now you- And he got- he got You're fed not... up- he got fed up with the quotations. He didn't like us mentioning, um, uh, Radio 1 DJs such as Sarah- Cox. And Carl- Oh, Cox? Yeah, he didn't like that. Sorry everyone.